Hello and welcome to Dice Friends. This and everything we do is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. And this episode of By Law and Order is also brought to you by Dragon Shield. You can check out their selection of board game sleeves, companion folios, and other great tabletop gaming accessories at dragonshield.com. And if you're looking to run your own Ravnica adventures, this is a great time to mention our affiliate link with DriveThruRPG. You can go to lrr.cc slash DriveThruRPG, and anything you buy, such as your own Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, helps us out. Thank you, and enjoy the show. One of the main selling points that has allowed the Omen Hiker's Guide to the Multiverse to entrench itself firmly at the top of the hotly contested multiversal publishing sales charts is its claim to accuracy. However, crucially for a book that also advertises it won't weigh you down as you pick your way through the treacherous and vampire-infested Geyer Mountains, the guide's definition of accuracy has very little to do with the total amount of facts it contains. For example, the entire plane of Innistrad is summed up in five words, not recommended for novice travelers. Instead, the guide claims that its accuracy comes from well-researched opinions, which, if the author deems necessary, are further expounded upon by an indulgent level of footnoting. The 63-page Ravnican subsection, supposedly owing to the voluminous, unspoken complexities of Ravnican culture and sexual norms, is a particularly egregious offender in this regard, so much so that even the title of the subsection, A Detailed Guide to Ravnican Tourism, itself has a footnote which reads as follows. The proper title of this section should be a very brief overview of the dullest places in Ravnica and the secret instructions on how to have a good time. Dear reader, please note that, the, that this entry is full of omissions. Obviously, many are accidental, as I could spend 10 lifetimes exploring Ravnica and still see new things every day, but I have also made just as many purposefully. As any seasoned traveler soon comes to understand, to visit a place is to change it. Going somewhere because that place is local and quaint introducing, introduces something to that place that is neither. As more visitors arrive, the more the place changes. Every new person makes the place less about the local things that you came to see and more about the money that you bring. Ravnica has already got lots of these places and they are well detailed in the guide. These are places that are catered to giving someone a good experience, and they certainly do that, but they are not real places. Nobody lives there. They just work there. So my advice, if you would like to see the real Ravnica, and you should take my advice, dear reader, because honestly, few planes compared to my native Kaladesh, you are best served by avoiding all of the things listed here and instead finding your own fun. Go somewhere outside the 10th district. The weirder, the better. The people are secretly lovely, and everything fun is also technically legal. Plus, once you get used to the smell, it kind of grows on you. last left our party, Slock had ruined the day of thousands of local sports fans. Nog had put a lot of things in his mouth so Avenir could have a quick chat about the tactics of the local power smashing club. <laughs> and Enor was deep in the weeds. And everyone finally got to enjoy some after sausage, which in a truly shocking turn of events worked as advertised and just made everyone's tum tum feel less rumbly. It's mid-afternoon as you emerge from the Undercity, and you find that the sun is shining, the air is warm, and spring finally seems to have arrived. And you've got a few hours before the concert. What do you want to do? Who wants to pre-drink? <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. My allergies, though, are starting to really kick in now that, you know, the tree gunk is in the air. Avenir spits up an entire leech. <laughs> are you going to finish that? Yeah, help yourself. All right. Uh, Slock's going to pick up the leech and just put it on a tree branch, like resting a caterpill, caterpillar, yeah. and goes, there you go, little fella. <laughs> and the leech just 
It kind of slops up <laughs> down onto the ground. Not a lot of blood in the trees these days. That's okay. A bird flies down and eats it. Slot quickly draws down what the bird looks like for wild shape later. <laughs> That's a circle of life right there. Hmm. Yeah, from me to you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, we took a shower after. Yeah, there's right? you're Where, you're fully clean. You no longer smell like swamp ball. Uh, mm-hmm. All the grease you've washed it all off. Yeah, the fully lubed swamp ball team. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Do we, did, did, we, did we all use apple? Or I was gonna say, do we have the faint smell of apple? I, I want bubble gum myself. Yeah. Uh. Well, you would use whatever Moss Bauer had. So I think that their special scent was flowers because that's where they grow in the fifth district. Mm. So maybe you maybe you smell faintly of like chamomile or something. Mm. But everybody agrees, not cinnamon. Bubble right? gum flowers. <laughs> yeah. No, cinnamon is. Oh weird. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cardamom, yeah. on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, a combination of cinnamon and cardamom. Hey, this ain't too nice. Yeah. Ooh, with some cloves? Yeah. Cloves, with some tea? Some anise? Yeah? Milk? Somebody I know may have spent a lot of their early 20s slathering their body with the lush uh, spiced scent bar that had cloves, cardamom, cinnamon, and other things to distract people from the smell of nightclubs. Speaking of nightclubs, we're going to one later today. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, or a uh, <laughs> abandoned factory. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You know, tomato, 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 tomato. Let right? me tell you, you can turn abandoned places into whatever you like. That that's fair. Yeah. How but, many electrical code violations do you think we'll find? <laughs> we can't talk like that. We have to not be cops while we're there. <laughs> right. Right. We can't, can't, cops can't always be copping. Wait a minute. We're cops. Shh, yeah. Oh no, we're bastards. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But first, we should probably go talk to uh, what was the name? Mar Marlo? Marla? Yeah, Marlo. 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 That was yeah. the one who uh, who wanted us to. It was a roommate, right? It was the roommate. It that... was it was her cousin Verity that's living with her while she right. goes to university. She's been acting kind of funny, and she handed you one of those weird posters, but it said one o two, and she pulled it out of the trash in Verity's room. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. My thought. What if this is signaling not a verse in scripture, but a date? 116, 102 would have been two weeks ago. All the ones that we've been seeing, 116, that's today's date. Ominous. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, Prian, is it P R I? I A N. Right, okay. He's been receiving payments at two week intervals. Wouldn't that be a strange coincidence if these were like signaling? Something to do with that. Yeah, I can see it. Well, uh, do we have like a, a an address for where Brian lives? Yeah, we we we've gone to see him before. Right. So you haven't gone to see him, but oh, I thought uh, we you, had. you I saw Proclia. Right. So you right, went right. to Proclia's mm-hmm. house and met her dog Snipper, mm-hmm. who is mm-hmm. nice but not bright. Uh, but Brian lives in the fourth precinct, as does Marlo. Oh, How convenient oh, for you guys. Oh. Yeah. My only question is. Uh, I mean, I was going to say that you all look like cops, but really only Nog looks like a cop. And since you are going to be, you know, trying to, like, go to a cool concert later tonight, does, do you guys want to change into more casual clothing before you go out? Or? Yeah, yeah. Right. I get the feeling that we should. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. Avenir used to be cool back in university. He'll just go and fit into some of his old clothes. We could go on a shopping spree. Yeah. He's got a check shirt, some suspenders, and no shoes. <laughs> Pick it up, pick it up. Hop, hop. <laughs> Avenir being a fan of ska very clearly che- <laughs> checks out. I still like to believe that I've pulled the, uh, the uniform off of the Carson D. Cackler robot and I'm just wearing that whenever I need to be fancy. Well, I did tell Featherweight that you guys may want to wear casual clothes to a concert, and I told, and as usual, I gave him very little instructions. But let's see what he's come up with. Well, let's y'all. go home and change and meet up. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <no. laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't wait to see anything different. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Wow. The, the yep. glow bracelets. Yeah, we definitely pulled that off an Please. animatronic robot. <laughs> Please don't put me into a situation where I can say the line. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have, like, 
does Slock have a permanent divot in his forehead from crushing beer cans? <laughs> <laughs> I tell people it's a birthmark. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Mm. All right. We're we're looking great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Avenir, you look relaxed. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> Do you know the, the arms the furry arms on the robot are sewed to the wrists? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Now, Eno, you've been in jail all these years. Mm-hmm. Where did you get this outfit from? As I said, I pulled it off of an animatronic Carson D. Cackler at the place I'm living. Oh. Huh? It's very stylish. <laughs> Amazing. It's well insulated. It's all <laughs> artificial fiber. Now I'm definitely sure you've sold me drugs before. <laughs> <laughs> Along with half of Burning Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> fellow kids, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> shall we make our way? Do you want to go see Brian first? Probably. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Let's. All right. Let's go. Let's go talk to Mr. Pryor. I'm glad we changed before going <laughs> before to see doing the police yeah. business. Yeah, yeah, this will be great. No, we're undercover. Yeah, exactly. This is completely nondescript. Uh-huh. Agency liaison officers. I mean, I would say most of you look pretty normal, except for Enor, to be honest with yeah. you. Like, you'd blend into the average, the average person in Ravnica. I look like I'm about to steal your Pokemon cards. <laughs> <laughs> You're not? <laughs> Ixnay on the Okemon pay. Right. <laughs> we have to talk about kaiju. Steal your. Right. No, we we can talk about Pokemon cards. from the year 1999 mm-hmm. to 2003. Mm-hmm. All right, let's head out. All right, you. So you make your way to Prian's house, which, as previously established, was 568 Spungle Lane Estates. And it is a well-maintained row house covered in pretty vines and flowers that are just starting to come into bloom. Does anybody want to make me a perception check on the outside? Sure. Ooh, I... I love to make oh. a perception check on the outside. 21. 21. I felt that on my foot. One second. 10. Did you grab it? Nope. It's wild they make their way all the way over Ooh. here. <laughs> Ooh. Five. Five. 28. Okay. Natural 20. Oh, well, you two are going to recognize that a bunch of these plants are some of those awful heirloom plants that you saw in the backyards or being grown decoratively as well. He's clearly in on the sauce of this traditional food society. Uh, but uh, you will also notice that the, uh, the blinds are drawn. Uh, and uh, it does look like someone's been home. Like the like there's empty milk bottles outside for the milkman to pick up, but it's uh, not looking like a cheerful place, we'll say, hmm. right now. Hmm. No, well, it doesn't look like the place of somebody who's been getting uh, some dollary dues. No. Over the past couple of weeks, we might say. Well, uh... Let's guess, knock yeah, on the door. Knock. <laughs> Nog does a kick flip over to the door as I, I, I ollie up the steps and, and knocks. <laughs> Knocking like this. <laughs> so you're going to knock on the door and you're going to hear some movement coming from inside, but it's not going particularly fast. But after a couple minutes of like shuffling around and stuff like that, and maybe somebody going to put on some proper pants, uh, one Priam Spazabon comes to the door and he looks really sad when he opens it and he goes... Hello, can I help you? Hi, uh, you might not recognize us. I recognize you. Oh, uh, well, that's good. Uh, There's no need for introductions then. Hi, hi, Mr. Spazabom. We uh, just wanted to ask you some follow-up questions and check in and see how you're doing. You doing okay? Did did someone die? You don't look so well. Dude, you just can't. Bro. Dude. (laughs) Bro. Dude. Bro. Dude. Bro. (laughs) Enor? <laughs> Just showing concern. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure. Come inside. Uh, inside his uh, row house, it's, you know, a nice row house. Clearly, he used to have more money than maybe he does now, but it's still a nice house with nice furniture. Uh, the blinds are drawn, though, and it's not particularly tidy on the inside. It looks like someone's not been having a great time of it, maybe for the past week or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, uh, so he sits down on his couch and he says, what do you want? Well, what do we want? Well, some information's come to light recently <laughs> mm-hmm. um, regarding um, 
your relationship with the uh yeah, with the the, the Society for uh, Creative Anachronisms. Culinary, like culinary, culinary anachronisms. anachronisms. I have a hard time with remembering the name. Yep. <laughs> Just say the SCA. The SCA. Yes. Um, and we wanted you to offer you an opportunity uh, to speak on that. Uh, I'm a member of the SCA. I've been friends with Nissus, their current president, for several years now. I was taking my dad to some of their meetings to get him out of the house and the, or out of the. I'm sorry, that's my bad, not Brian's. Out of the factory. Uh, I, I, what else do you want to know? Oh uh, well, we were curious about these um, periodic two thousand Zeno payments. <sighs> Look, I didn't kill my father. I truly loved him, even though he was a weird, gross guy. But I did need to get him out of the factory about four months ago. I was approached by a mysterious person. They wore a cloak and they said that they'd love to rent out the factory for an evening just once, but they wouldn't tell me what it was for. They offered me 2,000 Xenos up front and they said that double it if there was any damages afterwards. And we were just so desperate for money and they really didn't seem like a bad person. They were honestly very nice and reasonable. And, and you know, I thought... 2,000 Zeno's not nothing. That's a whole, like, that's a whole bunch of ingredients for making more after sausage. You know, we're bleeding money. And so I thought, you know what, why not? I know that Proclea says she's the only one who cares about money, but I understand what business has been going through as well. So I took my dad to an SCA meeting, and then we got 2,000 Zeno's, and you couldn't even tell anybody had been in there. And then they kept approaching us. At first it was irregular, and then they started saying they'd like to do it every two weeks. And the funny thing is, every time that we got one of these payments for renting out the factory for an evening, we sold more after sausage later. So I kept doing it. What can you tell me about the figure? That they were mysterious and wouldn't show me their face. They seemed to be wearing dark clothing underneath a dark cloak. Tall? Short? Heavy set? Uh, slender? Very slender. Medium height. Wood too? Huh? Sorry. My place is, my mind's elsewhere. <laughs> any other identifying features? The quality of their voice? Any mannerisms? Body language? They had a very neutral voice, to be honest with you. I don't know if it was a disguise. I couldn't tell anything about them other than that they were, they seemed nice and they were paying up front. And, you know, so I just kept doing with it. And now all of a sudden, my dad is dead. <laughs> and he's gonna start breaking down and crying. Oh, uh, hey, hey, Slock, you're you're good with people. Hey, man, don't worry about it. Here, do you need one of these? Uh, What's I, one of these? Uh, a cuddle ball. You know oh, okay. what? You put okay, the. Okay, it's not a drug. <laughs> <laughs> he's not handing a drug. I do have three. I mean, I should have three cuddle balls on me. Yeah, you do. You still have three cuddle balls mm -hmm. on him, and you give him the cutter cuddle ball, and it does have the effect. It says on the tin, it's a calm emotions thing, and he kind of. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you, and just kind of squeezes it. It's very reassuring. Got a nice weight in his hand. You know, it's going to mm -hmm. let him calm down a little bit. Yeah. Have you been eating like well recently? No. Do you need a brownie? No, no thanks. Okay. My dad always had the sweet tooth, but I don't. I, I'm more of a savory food person. Mrs. Posbaum, we don't want, we're not implying that uh, anything that you've done here led to the death of your, your father at all. And we thank you for you being candid on, uh, on this. Would you, you said that nothing. It, it, like they left the factory in good condition after was there any indication what they were doing or any any sort of contributing factors that you would have known about why they would want to be doing this i i have no idea i we we're just so desperate for money and it didn't seem like they were doing anything and i thought you know what if somebody wants to come in and shoot a porn in the after sausage factory let them do it were you so, ever curious as long as they about cleaned. what they were doing you know if I'm getting 2,000 Zenos, which is a lot of money, for any for just taking my dad out for the evening, which is something I would have done anyhow, I and just the correlation between the sales going up, and you know what? It just seemed like it seemed like it was a good thing that was happening. How would you communicate with this person in the cloak? They would just come to the factory. They'd knock on the door. 
Are there any like unused areas in the factory that you didn't often go to? Oh my gosh, yes. The factory used to be so busy and we used to have so much in there, but it's probably 70% empty now. The back of the factory was where we used to store all of the, the raw ingredients and stuff like that. And we'd sometimes just have it packed three stories high of like bags of grain and stuff if we we're going to do the big, you know, spring batch and stuff like that. Um, but uh, that's been that's been empty for, you know, since the regulations now. We just bring in the ingredients we need and we keep it all like half of the factory is decommissioned at this point. Is there a lower level, like a basement or anything to the factory? Not that I know of. Hmm. Your dad spent a lot of his time at the factory. Would he have noticed something if it had been moved or if, say, something had been done to the machines after one of these uh, nights out of the house? Uh, I mean, probably, but I I looked around very carefully after the first t- after the first time we did it, and I didn't see anything. It was honestly seemed kind of ridiculous. It was just as dirty and filthy as we'd left it. It was amazing. How, how do you facilitate access for them? Just do you give them a key? Do you unlock it for them and lock it back up after you're done? I just I I I, I mailed them a key. A couple, a few months ago, and they said they'd just come in and out as they needed to. So they're just in possession of a key. It wasn't a problem. What was the mailing address? They had me drop it off at like a, like a, I don't know, what the Ravda could have called of like a mailbox thing. Like a P.O. box? Like a P.O. box. Okay. That's sweet. Interesting. Fronts I mean, are us limited. We could, we, could, we could follow up, but I'm sure they won't be able, I mean... As po- official police business, I'm sure they could tell us the owner of the P.O. box. Mm-hmm. Or, or the, I don't know, R.A. box, whatever it's called here in yeah. Magic Town. So it's like a, is it an actual, like, registered box, or are we talking like a drop? Oh, uh, they use like a burner? Yeah, probably, I, 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 I'm going to assume that the people organized here used a burner. They used mm-hmm. a drop. Well, that's a lead that we could check into later at some point if we need to. You could have just easily have handed it to them in, anyway. Mm-hmm. Regardless, that just means that someone has a key and unfettered access to the factory. Mm-hmm. But I could tell that they weren't coming in there. As far as I could tell, there's like no footprints, dead, no like stuff left behind, nothing moved, nothing tampered with. Except, They're very respectful as far as I can tell. Except for a murdered human being. Since the death, <laughs> you know that's twice, <laughs> three times, no, no, and, three it. times, and you're waiting I've outside. I've only done it once. Hey, hey, hey! No, the, you, you, you asked about the, the did anybody oh, die at the start when you first walked in? Asking about death, yes. That's here. Have, have another cuddle ball. <laughs> He's got one in both hands now. <laughs> He's squeezing them furiously. He's slowly calming down. Out of curiosity, though, since and I apologize, the death of your father has. Have you been approached or heard anything from this person since? No, but they do have an appointment tonight. Whereabouts? Go on. At the at the warehouse? They booked it. What? But they booked it months ago. What time do you usually vacate the premises? Oh, we'd be out of there by like five o'clock. And we should probably be there before five set up shop yeah but wait isn't the show at like six uh the the band won't be on until like nine no that's true yeah yeah, Yeah, right um, and as as cool teens yeah uh, (laughs) i mean mean, opening act at nine yeah 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 yeah, yeah. opening act yeah but you know the opening act i'm pretty sure oh we are going to the opening perfect then we still go at least to the three songs great okay Show starts at ten o'clock. That's my bedtime. Jesus. <laughs> I can't believe the show starts at eleven o'clock. <laughs> I think the poster said something like eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. You've also got an appointment to meet somebody who's supposed to be leaving the house at seven. So. Yeah, we. Uh, it's going to be tough to do both. I mean, this this, this feels like a ta- this feels like an important tangible lead though that yeah. like we definitely yeah. need to follow mm-hmm. up on. Uh, Brian, I got to say this has been immensely helpful. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry about your dad. Okay. I, he doesn't really have anything else to show, so you guys... That was that was great. Bloop. Yeah, uh, we just leave him contact information mm-hmm. and tell him we'll keep him appraised of things. Mm-hmm. He's 100% going to show up tonight. You think so? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. What, Brian? Yeah. yeah. At the at, show? No, at, at the warehouse. <laughs> yeah, maybe. If we put it in his head that mm-hmm. whoever is using his warehouse or using the warehouse might be responsible yeah. for his father's death. I think it's very heavily implied that we are about to, we're going to follow up on this. Uh, don't come. Okay. That will only lead to incriminate you or we'll put you in harm's way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, stay home. Put you, you know, have a bath. It's uh, a lot easier for us that way. Ravnik and equivalent of Netflix and chill. Okay. Great. So, you leave him to his misery. Okay. Uh, do you want, while you're in the neighborhood, you have somebody else you can talk to. Yeah, we gotta yeah. go talk to Marlo. Platoon, in the order I put it in the document. <laughs> so rare. All right, Marlo, for a reminder, is the person who responded to your ad that you, yeah. that your card that you tacked up on saying, if you're looking, I'm cooking for answers. Mm-hmm. She's cooking for some answers to the mystery of her young cousin who uh, has been acting kind of funny and hanging out with the weird kids, as far as she can tell, and doesn't necessarily want anything done. She just wants her sort of followed and made sure everything is tickety-boo. We gotta follow that teen. Uh, tickety-boo. Uh, and so she lives uh, at a blank terrain muse, uh, which is just a few blocks from Brian's house, in a small ground-floor apartment with a nice patio outside, and there's two bedroom upstairs and a small office downstairs. And uh, as you knock on the door, she's going to open the door and loudly yell, Oh, hello, Mrs. Smugron. So nice to meet your entire family and your dog. Please come into my office. And then she's going to do one of these and she's going to get you all to come in. And then you're going to go into the office and she's going to shut the door and she's going to cast a privacy ward. Oh, all right. Mm. Sorry about that. Um, um, Veracity's upstairs in her room, but this is not really unusual because my work requires a lot of discretion. So, yes, you mentioned she's you a were a forensic, forensic accountant. accountant. Yes. Did you want to ask a forensic accountant anything about uh, s- mysterious payments? Yeah, yeah, we would love to get some clarification around uh, specifically. Um, yeah, I mean, like the payments to Proclea and Brian. All right. The the ones to Brian, I'm. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he's on the level about yeah. what, where, like, uh, I don't, but the I don't ones really to... know if they're from the SPC or the, the SPCA. SPCA. Yeah, the SCA. <laughs> they're not from the SCA. They're oh, from I... uh, yeah, AG Holdings. Ah, yes. Or AG. I wrote this down. AG Productions. Mm. All right. So do adult want... gyration productions. Do you want to ask her about the Proclea stuff or the Prion stuff first? Um. I don't know. Uh, let's start with the Prian stuff. Yeah, so yeah. Let's, let's, we're, let's having a, we're having a Prian sort of day. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, she'll look at you and say, oh, okay, AG Productions. Hmm. Uh, well, there's a lot of companies, and she's going to pull out some big files and do some accountant magic, which is the thing that happens on Ravnica. Uh, she goes, hmm, okay, well, that's not a registered company, but well, that's not all that uncommon, to be honest with you. Uh, I have a list of common aliases for underground dealings. Let me uh, cross-reference that. And then she's going to say, aha, after a couple of minutes. Hmm, this is very interesting. AG Productions, as far as I can tell, has only been around for four months. Really? Hmm. But uh, the seems I've been traced it to what looks like a numbered shell company seven eight four two three zero zero six i n c. Hmm, that doesn't mean anything. But good, I won't write that down. Yeah. <laughs> I won't have to write ask you to repeat that to write no, it down. It's just a random string of numbers. Hmm. But that but that shell company has been does seem to have been linked to other aliases that crop up at irregular intervals, exist for no longer than six months, and then go dark. Huh. Such as? Looks like someone's running a shadow firm, and, hmm, this is tick, 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 tick. Honestly, really sophisticated. There's no guild affiliation. There's no chamber in membership. God, who's ever done this has really covered their tracks well. Huh, okay, but I've got you. I can't guarantee this is a list of the of all the aliases that might have been associated with this company, but here they are. AG Live Entertainment, AG Entertainment, AG Production, AG Music Production, AG Concerts, AG Promotions, AG Boars Inc., AG Runaway Fund. Runaway Fund. Boars Inc.? Boars Inc. and Runaway Fund. Could you spell Boars? B-O-A-R-S. Oh, okay. Uh, like oh, Boars Incorporated? Yes. 
Okay. <laughs> I was expecting more German as well. And, yeah. And, and the runaway. Mm-hmm. The runaway. F- yeah. Interesting. A G runaway. Is that correct? Yeah. I okay. Mean, what's seriously the f- though? This is just Ogvin, right? Well, uh, I mean, could be. Could what's be. Ogvin's last name again? Uh, uh, dib, 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 Gobrin. A G. Yep. And Ogvin A G is, um, well, it would be silver. Yeah. This uh, I, I got level with you. We've been, you know, in the know of Ogvin for many years now. Mm-hmm. This is the first I realized that his name started with an A and not an O. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, no A U. It's I um, figured out it a few yeah. sessions ago. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's, yeah. Uh, it's it's a re- uh, root word uh, gold. for gold. Gold. That's a very. And while you're discussing this, she's going to say, that's a very Orzov name. You know, I bet somebody, I bet the person who set all this up is, co- is connected somehow to the Orzov because this is too sophisticated for normal means. Hmm. This is also a guy who's relevant enough that I remember his name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, he was, he was a central character slash villain. Yeah, and the last time we dealt with people. He, he, clarification, he wasn't a villain. You just had to go and retrieve him. His sister <laughs> just wanted you to do her a favor because that's how the Orzov work. Yep. Yeah, he favors just had to favors. come back to a Sunday for a family dinner they that were, he didn't want to be at. I would, I, I would put Ogvin as like a pseudo villain. <laughs> Definitely an antagonist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's that's the, a, what's the, that's what's just the, what he's what's like. What's the story word for <laughs> is a dick? <laughs> <laughs> Agonist. Yeah. <laughs> it's very Best close to Ogvin. supporting actor. <laughs> well, that's what else really, do you want to know? Uh, um, we we to... also were tracking a series of, or a single payment, uh, made from the Sixth District Power Smashing Club. That bad, huh? Uh oh. Mm-hmm. Who's in trouble with the Power Smashers? Uh, that's prob- confidential. Yeah. Do you need to know a name in order? I suppose you need to know who it is to trace the payment. I mean, if we know it came from the Power Smashers, I don't need to know anything that would be totally related to your investigation. I can just tell you that usually the Power Smashers is the, the, um, the we'll say it's the, uh, the dirty business arm of the Chamber of Commerce. Mm. So nice. bribes, fees to assassins, that kind of stuff. Racketeering. Racket, all, all the stuff that doesn't quite get declared on the Azorius tax invoices. Mm. Is 50,000 Zenos... <laughs> That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Even by their standards? I mean, maybe not by their standards, but it's a lot of money by a normal person's standards. If I had $50,000 from the Power Smashers, I'd be, probably be trying to leave town. What's your run- runaway fund looking like? Oh, uh, I don't know. I have about ten to 15,000 Zenos, but it's taken me uh, many years to save that up. Mm. But I live frugally. Hmm. She's going to look at her clock, because this has taken some time. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, and you've yeah. already visited, and she's going to say, oh, my God, it's almost seven. Verity's going to be leaving soon. You need to follow her. Please, 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 please. I've helped you out so much. Just make sure she's okay. Yes. Yeah. We, absolutely. Thank you very, very much. Mm-hmm. We could stay here and wait till she's leaving and then follow her out. Yeah, that sounds great. And, you know, it's about seven, so you're going to hear, tick, 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 tick. and then Verity's going to yell, hey. Uh, Auntie Marlowe, I'm leaving now. Don't wait up. Bye. Slam. Do you have anything that Verity has handled recently? Article of clothing? Oh, there's the stuff up in her room. She's gone. Give so to we... Valencia. Oh, Ooh. yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. <laughs> you can, yeah. Yep. You um, can grab anything from her room. Just like, you know, not something like weird, like her underwear or anything like that. Yeah, no, like, I don't, there's yeah. another pair of shoes by the door. Oh. No, that's also weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Sweater, 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 a, hat, sweater. a yeah. scarf. scarf. She's got a she's got a sweater and a scarf hanging up by that. You don't even have to go into her. Yeah, drink, no, that sounds, room. that, that sounds, great. sounds great. I'm for that. <laughs> go to the room. All right, they all right, don't... sweetie. Smell this. Oh, this is. T- oh. Why'd Not... you make me do that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, lead on. All right, so Valencia is going to smell her sweater. Yes. Great. Uh, Valencia. Uh, We're just four men following a teenager after dark. Mm-hmm. We're following our yeah. dog. As a favor. I'm, we're walking my dog. We yeah. are walking a dog. You know what? Everybody make me a stealth check. 
just to see how inconspicuously you're walking Ooh, this dog as a group. 20 I'm... on the die. Uh, oh. Ooh, get out all those good rolls early. Yeah. Uh, 18. 18? Uh, 18. 18? I am skateboarding silently. Uh, nine. Big, big soft wheels. <laughs> nine, but I'm pretty sure I can be very quiet when I'm walking. I'm going to say I mean, that as a group, you easily pass this, and maybe you trip and stumble, and Veracity hears something coming from behind her. But if she glances behind her, she's just going to see a group of normal people walking a dog, and they're not very close, and they don't like seem to be keeping an eye on her at all. And she's not expecting to be followed for any reason. Respectful distance. So I mean, she's not going people. to. She's not going to expect anything. She's walking through a very safe part of town. The fourth mm. precinct is a nice district. that's close to the university. So she will not pay any attention to you, even maybe if she turns behind and looks. And she's going to get on the uh, the, the subway. Uh, she's on the Sidvani line. And you can see here that she, I'll read you her description. She's a youngish looking human girl with dark, slightly frizzy hair. And she's wearing a hoodie and some dark pants. She's dressed just super casual, normal teenage clothes. What's, uh, what is like there any like graphic on the hoodie? Or is it just like a nondescript? Non it's like a nondescript hoodie. Okay. It's just, you know. It's it's a nice hoodie, like it's stylish. Oh, okay. But you know, it's not it's not like dumpy. It's like cool hoodie. It's right. It's like going out hoodie rather than sitting at home Netflix hoodie. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's something with like your logo on the front of it, just in big bold. <laughs> uh, so uh, Ravnica is not really like a logo thing. Mm. There's not like not yeah. many too many people wearing like <laughs> no, Puma. When I got into magic, Ravnica was all about giving out these lapel pins for each of the things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, big on logos. Yeah, yeah. Twelve of them. Yeah, ten. Ten, ten. Ian. Ten. 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 Those are for the guilds. Nine. 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 Yeah. Nine. Okay, eight, eight. Yeah. Veracity uh -huh. is not uh, Veracity and Marlow aren't gilded. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to be wearing guild logos or clothing i was kind of hoping she was wearing one of those like skeleton hoodies that you know that had the rib cage on the front she, she looks like your average cool 18 year old right like a I don't thrasher know what hoodie kind of, what, what kind of uh, band we're gonna go see i was gonna I, I was kind of hoping we're going to like a my chemical romance uh concert mm -hmm. all right so she is on the sitvani line and the sitvani line as you will know because you are local and not because i'm just telling you uh she is is goes through the second precinct and she gets off at Vokespur Square, which is that square across from the Overbog. But she does she goes absolutely nowhere near the Overbog like a sensitive uh, like a sensible young girl. She gets off and she books it away from it into deep into the Greaseway, away from the Overbog and the After Sausage Factory. And she is walking the quick and purposeful walk of a girl who does not want trouble and is slightly scared, but does not want to, people to know that she is slightly scared because she's in a weird neighborhood and it's getting dark. Okay. So for now, she will be on more on her guard. We so are presented with a situation where we can either keep doing the stealthy approach, uh, or we do, could do the thing where it's like, "Oh, hey, <laughs> did we see you earlier? Guess we're going the same direction." Or is that also creepy? That's creepy. That yeah. is. Yeah. That's creepy. May I never there. talk to a woman ever. <laughs> may, 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 may I pr propose a solution? Yes. I just like make a silent image of a cop that looks like it's following us. But then, hold on. No, but then, that, because then it, she'll think that we're, we're weird, and that the mm. cop make an image of a cop following her, mm. and we're following the cop because we don't trust cops, and she'll think we're cool because she'll be like, "Oh, this cop's not going to do anything because they're a witness." And she doesn't know that most of us are cops. I didn't know that most of us were technically cops. Technically, okay, I guess maybe... only two of you are cops. I'm You're just diplomat. working with some people who hired some cops, and. I, I haven't signed anything. You've killed a man. Yeah. He's the opposite of a cop, really. No, no it's a not from my experience. If, well, so if 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 we public servant, <laughs> Techni technically, if Valencia's got her scent, we could follow from quite some ways. Away. Oh yeah, you don't yeah. have to. Like, we you don't, don't even have really to need her. to have like mm. vision on her. And well, then yeah, I don't have to expend the spell slot. Let's do that. All yeah. Right. Let, let's. Do just we want to keep that. a mark on her? You can keep a mark on her. I will. I will uh, read you some. Do you, you as you get into Vokesburg uh, Square? Do you want to make a perception check for the surroundings? See if anything else is weird or creepy Ooh. in this area that she's quickly and wisely moving quickly through. Twenty two. I, I do a manual, so I get like a little bit higher. Seven. Fifteen. Fifteen. Seven. You are very friends. Just, Enor, you are wait. Enor and Nog. 
Uh, you were both very distracted, I guess, by this silent image cop plan. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I rolled a four. <laughs> you, so you were both having that discussion. And what did you roll? 15. 15? 22. 22. Check out, right. check out my manual. Yeah. Sweet. On a 15, ver- veracity, booking it. Like, yeah. if you want to keep up with her, because she is wisely in a, like I said, crappy part of town, dangerous bog. She, she's hoofing. So you're going to notice that if you want to keep following her, you will have to get on it. And But you notice, across, you notice, as you look out over Volksburg Square, you can still see a leftover poster from the Obort Zunak Day Luncheon Gala in a trash can. <laughs> and it's sitting right in front of the overbog. And you can see in the overbog that they're bringing in some new equipment. The gates are open and uh, there's uh, some brush clearing rigs and some crates marked with Is It Insignia mm. that are being delivered. Okay. I have a question. What time is it right now? Uh, we're going to say it's like 7.30. So we missed the window to... Oh, yeah, we absolutely did not get there before anyone else. You, were t- like you had warehouse. a very involved discussion yeah, yeah. with... That's probably fine if we don't... It's all going to end you. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be okay. Uh, is, is, like, is it dark now? It's starting to get quite dark, okay. which is why she's walking um, fast. Yeah, like... Um, but it also means could, that maybe you're a bit stealthy. I mean, I can get a... I could wild shape. That's true. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually. Being a, a, being a bird idea. or something. Oh. All right, so Slock's going to... I'm going to wild one shape. I did. <laughs> you I, into that bird. I'm going to... It was a weird owl fat gull hybrid. Not... Don't do owl. <laughs> Not an owl? No, because I've heard tell that if people see an owl, that's like a weird thing. It's like an omen. I yeah. would recommend a shoe bill. A shoe... <laughs> do they have good night vision? Isn't that part of what we're trying to do? Sure. Okay. Why not a pigeon? <laughs> a pigeon sounds good too. Yeah, I could go for a pigeon. All right. You transform into a bird. I'd what like, would you like to do, bird slot? Slock turns into the most flamboyant pigeon. Uh, you and look incredible. Follows uh, veracity. All right. And we will go from quite a far distance. All right. From- they can tell that. I'm what pigeon I am because it has uh, like sweatbands. <laughs> mm. yeah, sick. <laughs> like that uh, wingtip markings that look <laughs> yeah, like yeah, sweatbands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, your yeah, tail feathers it's... are in the shape of like the horns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the the eye band is like it has. has <laughs> this was your opportunity to turn into a bird of paradise, which you kind of have. Yeah, I mean pigeons are paradise to me. <laughs> so from high up, you can see the the. You can see the construction site. You can see those trucks moving in. You can see people waving stuff in. It seems to be fairly... They've brought in a couple more diggers. Monic mm-hmm. Shot did say that they're doing stuff. But, mm-hmm. you know, clearly more equipment is being brought in and stuff like that and new stuff. So that's still undergoing and active and happening, even at 7 o'clock on a Saturday night. Uh, and uh, you can see Veracity. And she is booking it and goes into a store that you found when you were investigating the area early that was not open yet, but now is open. It's that store, Grudian Provisions. And she pauses in front of the store, and then another girl comes up and meets her. And this girl looks kind of familiar to a girl that you've seen before, but she's blonde. Make me a recalling NPCs you've met before. I don't think only Eight, slot can oh, yeah. see this. 18. 18. This girl looks like a young, blonde Franca Dobrek. That's probably fine. Uh, and they're going to meet up. They're going to give each other a little hug because they're excited to see one another. And uh, Veracity is going to pull a, a flyer out of her pocket, out of her hoodie pocket. It's going to be one of those 116 flyers. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be like, yeah. And then they're going to go inside Grudy and Provisions. Okay. And then they don't come back out. Hmm. Is there like a window or anything like that? The uh, if you want to land. Is there like bird? a skylight? No. Are they? Uh, yeah. Are there any windows? Their windows are all like covered up with like dusty old signs for like energy drinks that you're pretty sure they don't sell anymore because they're banned. Okay. Uh, I guess. Uh, I mean, you I saw them re- go in. I should relay where. Yeah, yeah. relay my locos five through eight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is there a chimney? Oh, is there a chimney? Uh, I'm gonna say maybe there's a chimney. Is somewhere. Santa Claus an animal? 
We're I all mean, animals. I mean, birds are good at falling down <laughs> chimneys. Yeah, not the Mrs. Claus, am I right? <laughs> is, is, <laughs> birds have been known to fall down That's chimneys. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, oh. Okay, I am going to fly down the chimney. All right, you fly down the chimney. I'll be. Oh, I should have turned into a chimney swift. You also have not told us where they are. <laughs> I'll get, I'll get there. I'll get there. Okay, Chim- so well, well, before I fly down the chimney, I uh, relay a message at, in a, a pitch that Valencia will be able to hear. Oh, sure. Do yeah. you make me an animal handling check? <sighs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, five. You oh, th- sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wrong paper. Six. <laughs> I mean, you could speak with animals. As yeah. A, uh, you I can, oh, yeah, I speak, speak with animals. I'll speak with animals. Okay. Yeah. All right, fine. You speak with animals. I just wanted to make it so... I mean, Valencia's got her set. Yeah, so Valencia's yeah. very smart and could find it. Valencia gets the instructions to go to Grudy and Provisions mm-hmm. and is going to lead these three to them. But you're going to go down the chimney yeah. and you're going to come out of the chimney in the boarded up condemned apartment above Grudy and Provisions. Okay, great. Is How much they want? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this would be an upgrade for Enor, I think. Uh, I, I don't know. Prob- any, anything in there? Uh, 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 some old stained furniture that looks like people have used it for various things. Uh, he, trash. What kind of trash? <laughs> Empty beer cans. Oh. Cigarette butts. Oh, it's a party uh, zone. Leaves. Yeah, uh, moldy wallpaper. Can I hear anything? Uh, if you put your ear to the floor. Well, pigeons. Yeah, pigeon. <laughs> Are you still a pigeon? Um, nah, I'll turn back into slock. <laughs> uh, if you put your ear to the floor, maybe you hear some muffled talking, but nothing, nothing, nothing you can really okay. make out. Got it. What are you three doing while this is happening? Are you going into Grudy and Provisions? I mean, I guess, yeah, we've arrived. All um, right, well, in that yeah. case, you're going to hear ding as the door opens. Okay. All right. Do uh, do any of us have that flyer? Didn't one of us A take one? A 116 flyer? Uh, I didn't take one, but I think I have an uh, an inkling. Great. You have, a, you have a, another flyer that you picked up today. Yeah. Um, all right, so you're going to get, so you don't see this lock, so just pretend you don't see this. Uh, and you see, And behind the counter... Uh, of this dusty old bodega with a cat watching you warily is a large troll with a mohawk Mm. and an easygoing vibe. He is reading a comic book and the store is empty aside from him and it doesn't really (sighs) seem to sell anything aside from snacks and magazines. Hmm. Not gonna lie, Slock, this would probably be better if you were here. (laughs) I mean, is there a way... (laughs) Like to go from upstairs to the main. Sure, you could, you could, um, you could Fall break the door the... and, or and break the door and go down the hallway and out the front, the entrance and stuff like that. It's all just boarded up because it's condemned. Sure, uh, I'll do that. All right, make me a strength check. I feel like that's your good stat, right? Oh no, that's why I gave you the look. Oh, <laughs> you think I can't break? Well, that I mean, door? you could also. Do some sort of wild shape thing. You could fly back out the chimney. Mm, a tiny yeah. worm and crawl through the lock hole. I want. I want to save the second wild yeah. shape. Uh, Nineteen. Nine, oh, it's a crappy old door. Crappy old door. Does he hear that? I yeah, see. he's gonna hear a clunk from upstairs, and he's gonna say, "Hey, just one minute," and he's gonna look around and grab a big broom mm. and just kind of go out into the hallway. And Slock, you're going to meet this guy coming down. Mm -hmm. But you recognize this person. You've talked about this person before. Do you not know who this is? Is this uh, Alvinir? It is Alvinir. It's Alvinir. (laughs) It's Alvinir. Alvin, my guy, what is up? Slock, I was coming up here to beat the shit out of someone, but oh, it's just you. Dude, oh, that would have been so funny. That would have been so funny. just beat the shit out of each other. Well, we we could have tried. I know. I would have been uh, funny, guy. I mean, hey, I yeah. heard, I heard, I heard that you really showed those Kapitza Direct kids well, one flag today. Well, you can take the boy out of the swamp ball field, but you can't take the swamp out of my lungs. Oh my God! Yeah, good job, man. It's hell yeah! Nice going. That's the swamp field. The swamp field or yeah, yeah. scrubland. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, yeah, you still got it, man. One second, one second, one second. Yeah, I gotta yeah, head back sure. downstairs. I got some people. Who I'll join it. with you. I'll yeah. come with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got yeah. to. I gotta be watching for the for mm. the door. Oh, for sure. All right, and he's gonna come back in, and he's gonna say, "Thanks for your patience, gentlemen. No worries. Just meeting a friend of mine up there." Oh, oh hey. hey! You'll never believe it, Alvin. These guys. You know, I was a real menace out there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But these guys. You know, it's a team game. <laughs> Played our hearts out. Put our hearts on the table right there. Stabbed it right through the heart. And we did it. I would not have single-handedly won this game of Swamp Ball if it were not for... My teammates. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Hell yeah. So you guys, are you guys all here for the thing? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Down yeah. to clown. Yep. All right. Do you got anything that you're going to show me? You bet. We. You it's show? It's the Tachi 116. Uh, what for what? Oh, I thought that was the one that um, uh, Ogavan gave us. Ogavan. And he's going to look at that and go, interesting. Hm. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Five Xenos, please. One for everybody. Well, dogs dogs counted. <laughs> got to get the admission, obviously. Got to get the door yeah, charged. Okay, got yeah, okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah, people got to get paid. Yeah. I hand out 25 Support your Zenos. locals, you know. Mm, oh, right. wow. Wow. All right. Yeah, I could just, just put it on my agency bill. <laughs> Oh no, they only take cash. They only take cash. No, I mean like yeah, you two. We... I'll file an oh, expense report. Reimbursement afterwards. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you pay him, and he's gonna go. All right, all right. Nice to see you, Swamp Good Ball to see heroes. You, man. I mean, I kind of like. I, it's it's kind of bad that Capizza Dirac lost, but my God, what a game! It was so violent. There is just people just getting knocked out left and right. That both the both the throttlers were just woo. Scary. Sounds exciting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you head out back to the Bone Works, and he's going to gesture his thumb down the hallway marked staff only, and there's a door at the back of the staff only hallway. All right. So do you go through? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, You the back door of Grudian Provisions opens up onto an alley uh, that emerges after a short distance in some overflowing, gross-looking dumpsters onto Slatcha Street. Every single building here is boarded up because this is all more old, like sausage factories and stuff like that. And the one directly across from the alley that you can basically have a dead eye to the door for is, uh, is um, an old derelict bone works. Uh, it has been condemned like everything else, but this, unlike all of the other condemned buildings, does not look condemned. In fact, the door is propped slightly open, and you can see that somebody has just gone inside. All right. Let's go in. That, that seems yeah. like the way to go. All right, you step inside the bone works, and even compared to the fading evening light outside, it's dark in here. A few feeble lights struggle to illuminate the inside of the derelict factory, but what they mostly do is cast horrible shadows. <laughs> Before the sausage standards were passed, this bone works ran two shifts a day, supplying the nearby factories, but now it is, like most of its customers, out of business. A faded sign that reads drink after sausage in an old-fashioned font is nailed to the wall and covered in a thick film of whitish gray dust. We fucked the economy. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. This, this local economy. I asked this time, son. We Fucked local businesses, <laughs> from, from what I can tell. <laughs> you walk through the bone works, and it is, it is a the floor is a maze of rusty, serrated machinery and crushers and grinders. I think you can tell what they used to do mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. is for the that, bones. yeah, for for the tooth sausage, which you're not allowed to have anymore because it breaks your teeth. What a shame. Uh, oh yeah, but the, there is the a sausage that chews you. Yeah. <laughs> There is a clear path through the thick, dusty floor that leads you through the building. And you can see that there's footprints that are in it and stuff like that. And as you wind your way past all the derelict bone smashers, you notice more and more people in front of you and coming in behind you that are all following the same track. Eventually, after you get to the end of the bone works, you come to a small line of people that are waiting at for something. At the front, you spot three familiar figures, two of them still highly bruised from today's game. They are carrying musical instruments, and they nod at the at the doorman, who is an enormous gruel centaur with a thick, bushy beard, an eye patch, and her, what can only be described as horrific scars up his right side. Hello. They are thick and jagged, and they have 
an unsettling and regular machine-like quality to them. Are they wearing pants like this or like this? He's wearing centaur pants. <laughs> he, the, se- the, the doorman is missing several fingers on his right Ooh. hand and he is scarred and disfigured. Okay. Uh, he But he grunts at Zossel, re- who reaches into a bag and hands him a cookie. They give each other a high five and he lets them in. Then they, they go into a door that's just marked office they shut the door behind them. They don't come out. Then the next group approach the centaur. This group is two girls. You recognize that one of them. One of them is blonde and looks kind of like a young Franca Dobrik, and the other one is that girl with the dark frizzy hair and the kind of dressy, I'm looking cool hoodie, not right, the Netflix the hoodie. Yes. Uh, Veracity ner- nervously looks at the doorman and shows him her poster, and uh, the doorman sort of intimidatingly bends down, looks at them, looks at the poster checks their ID, tells them something, makes a threatening gesture, and then says that they can go in and stamps their wrists. They go in. Okay, well... Uh, Are we up next? Uh, yeah, you can just wait in line and you'll be there in like two minutes. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. The doorman stares at you impassively. He is even bigger in person. Let me tell you, I've statted out this guy and he's a terrifying monster. Un- un- unlike everyone else, He's he gonna look at you for, and he's not gonna ask any for you, any of you for ID, and he's just gonna stare at you impassively, drumming the horrible serrated scars on his arm. Hey man. Yeah, hey, what's up? How's your night? Pretty good. You want to make it better? <laughs> you know, mm. you know that stuff Zossel gave you. Oh yeah. Man, I got that shit that bruised Zossel. You know what I'm saying? This is nothing to me, man. Slock's gonna pull out two of the brownies mm. and hand them, gesture them almost like a red pill, blue pill. He's going to take it with his th- remaining fingers from his right hand and he's just going to take both of them and he's going to, uh-huh, anything to show me? Going to arch poster. his eyebrow up. Huh? The poster. The poster. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you have what Ogavan sent you? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to show him that? Kind of, yeah, actually. Yeah. All right. He's going to look it up and he's say, Boss tells me to say hi. Or boss tells you to say hi to me. Hi. All right. So. Well, if the boss says it's okay, you can come in. But I'm still got to tell you everything I tell every- everyone else. Mm-hmm. No sex in the champagne room? Oh, Zenos, Greenos, or Pinos? <laughs> no one rides for free? Shut oh. up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feed us after midnight. Shut up or I'll break your skulls. First up, <laughs> this place is a rental. You don't touch anything. You don't mess with anything. We catch you messing with the place, you're dead. We catch you messing with anyone else, you're dead. We catch you groping anyone, you're dead. You have a nice respectful time. You have fun. You don't make you make sure everyone else has a nice respectful time. You start a fight? What happens if you start a fight? You're dead. You're dead. Ah, Sue says you can't teach an old dog new tricks. No offense to your dogs. He stamps your wrist. <laughs> I mean, she's getting on in years. Makes a threatening, makes the same threatening gesture he does to everyone. Remember, no trouble for the boss. He lets you in. Hey, man. One for the road. Slock hands of a third brownie. <laughs> Thanks. You only took one. I thought he took oh, two. and he took both of them. He's a oh, he's a big guy. He's a big guy. He's a two brownie boy. He's yeah. a three brownie boy. Three brownie. <laughs> he's about. There's gonna be a three brownie something. He's a boat. <laughs> Tachi the centaur is about nine and a half feet tall and uh, uh, killed a lot of Phyrexians. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you can see that on a t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> so Tachi is <laughs> nine and a half. Kill them all Phyrexians. Kill them all yeah. Phyrexians. Yeah. <laughs> Ravnik on the back. A is a, uh, yeah. On the back, he's a I three a brownie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like Merc and Merch. <laughs> three ba- three brownie boy. <laughs> all right, so he lets you in. You've successfully gotten in. It's all very fun. But you get inside, and it's just a weird office. It's just dusty and weird. But as soon as he shuts the door, a magical portal crackles to life. Oh hell! Wow. And it and it has. White and black sparks of energy. Uh, it's a portal, portal, right? Like yeah. not a. It's a, not it, a omen path. Yeah, it's just a normal. It's a okay. normal magical portal. But it happens to be black and white. Yes. 
and red all over. Mm. No, we, we can't stop fights. That was like the literal last thing we were oh. Donald told about. Okay, 14 okay. trillion missed triggers. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, the key item here is just not to make sure it's not a fight. Oh, yeah. A brawl is okay. Mm. A Donnie Brook is satisfying. I mean, if you just dummy somebody, then I'm one sure. and done. Yeah, yeah. Are you gonna... Two sounds, you hitting them, them hitting the floor. Damn straight. You guys uh, want to party before we go in? Is there is there a party area? Before? No, this is just a weird door that you open up that takes you to a portal. As if to obscure the location of this strange illegal club. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let's trust Tachi to like kill us. Uh, yeah. You know, if there's one thing that I could that, that I think could happen is him beating yeah, the crap he, out he of us. He is so great. Yeah, if I can great. trust him with my power converters, I can trust him with my transportation <laughs> devices. <laughs> He's gonna pick me up love, by the ankles and beat me against. I love storage wars. Okay, let's <laughs> this go. Just do one of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. just one. Wham! Yeah. Put me back on my feet. You just. Uh, you just Nog, land. <laughs> uh, Nog does a nolly into the portal into the portal you come out <laughs> into the after sausage factory <gasps> what a surprise it all oh, comes yeah. together oh my God. there are hundreds of people already in here mostly milling, milling about in what uh prian previously described to you is that open space at the way back of the factory uh, where they used to keep ingredients and now they don't keep much of anything because they're not making much of anything. Warehouse. There's people sitting on the stairs and they're kind of hanging out on the rail on the railings and like they're sitting on like assorted bags of stuff. There's a bar set up and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is just, this is, there's some 50 gallon drums of like weird liquors and tinctures that they use, but mostly it's empty in here. And what they have done is they've used this space uh, to set up a big stage. There's an enormous stack of amps at both ends, and there's a crowd already waiting patiently at the front because they want the good seats uh, and they don't want to get destroyed in the mosh pit. Scaffolding has been erected to support stage lights, and there's even a projection screen. Colorful psychedelic imagery plays across the, the screen, and the light show intercuts at regular intervals to a plain white screen decorated with familiar now thick black gothic font and all caps it reads salvation is at last at hand music is being played from the sound booth it's some sort of strange hard-edged hurdy-gurdy music and so it's both droning and meditative yes. <sighs> uh bc grana and zossel you remember these wonderful people there's Absolutely. bc yeah. there's grana mm. you mo you whoops you saw them very recently underwater uh, Zossel, only you that? saw Enor very quickly. And uh, he they was so mean to. <laughs> he blasted now, his ass. They're now <laughs> relieved of their instruments, and then they see Slock, and they wave, and they wave you guys over because hey. they're standing near the stage. They and they're like, hey. hey, and they say, and then Zossel says to you, Slock, hey, how's it going? We're opening tonight at the coolest show in the 6th District! Hell You're finally yeah. going to see that our sound, the double drum way, has got the real groove, my dude. I'm excited to hear all of the drums. Oh, this yeah. is going to be a dope show. It's going to be awesome. And BC and Grana are going to look at you guys and say, nice playing today. Can't believe that you had to fill in for Moss Bauer, but you really put us through our paces. They're, they have respect for your swamp ball prowess because they were expecting to destroy you and you actually challenged them. Well, you know what they say, ball is life. Mm -hmm. All right. And then they're going to they're gonna make some small talk and eventually BC is going to elbow Zossel and say, hey, Zossel, they're here. Ask them about the thing. And Zossel's go, oh, yeah. Don't tell nobody this because this is going to get us in trouble. But I lost something in here a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, you know how I like to do my baking, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now I feel you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. One second. No, no, you... you, you. Ah! <laughs> That's for all of us. Continue. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Yeah, I, lo I lost, a, lost a plate of brownies. I had some... Uh, I, I pinched some hybrid zoom caps from the greenhouses and whipped up a Zossel special. BC chimes in. Yeah, those were a bit too special, dude. I don't remember. I didn't remember anything for like two days after I ate them. And they weren't that bad. You're just a lightweight. 
Well, everyone's a lightweight according to you then. God, even that half batch you did last week before practice was so strong. I was so ill the next morning. Well, this also special is unpredictable. Anyway, you see a pan of brownies around here? Can you just make sure that, like, you pick them up and nobody eats them? Yeah. Okay. They're going to be real stale by now, but still, they're probably, like, mm, I, would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Anyhow, we got to get ready. Bye. See ya. <laughs> the walls. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. I mean, who among us hasn't been there? Been too high to function? Yeah. 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 To the point where it may be the cause of your death. Yeah. Gonna have to have a chat with Zossel later about safety with his friends. Yeah. Hmm. I mean. God, I can't believe I remembered his name. That damn kid made me remember his name due to unsafety. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I can't forgive that. But it is kind of funny. You know, that it happens that way. That's why they call it man's laughter. (laughs) (sighs) Oh, my God. So now that you're in the factory, there's a lot of people around, but there's all sorts of things that you could do. You could look around and you can talk to other people and you can beat them and stuff like that. You could investigate that broken window that you would have seen from the bog. Yeah. It's about three stories up and it's at the back of the warehouse. And I think you could probably get there from here very easily as long as you're careful. Yep. Uh, you can look for that pan of brownies, but I think we all know what happened to that pan of brownies. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Uh, uh, you Eaten can s- in eight bites. <laughs> Same thing that happens to any brownie you leave around a person who doesn't know that they're brownies. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can sneak into the after sausage uh, office by the front door. Uh, you can try to go unlock the front door. You can go to the bar area where they're selling beers and, and other things. You can go to, you can try to get into the VIP area, but I will caution you that, you know, there's about eight to 10 large assorted gruel warriors, all of similar build and, uh, uh, Phyrexian scarring to Tachi that appeared to be doing, um, work here are we able to like see into the vip area at all uh it's or is com- it like behind closed doors it's like they've got some curtains up because it's just like okay. an open area i'm just curious if like if we see anybody that we recognize in the vip area or you anything. can go and see if you can try to look because we the VIP probably area. do have the boss's blessing mm-hmm. mm, that's true we can go anywhere yeah, let's go yeah. to the vip area we are vips after all mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all I right bet they have the free drinks there that's true. Not no, four, not no, fourteen dollars. No, not yeah. fourteen dollars. They're twenty yeah. zibs. It's yeah, twenty can... zibs for a beer. It's very reasonable. It's not fourteen dollars for a beer or twenty zibs for a beer. It's four hundred for a bottle of Malort. <laughs> <laughs> You've been going to the wrong parties, my friend. We uh, sure did. <laughs> yeah. so sure t- did. <laughs> So it sounded like you guys were interested in going to the VIP area and maybe looking at that window. I definitely yeah. want to go yeah. look at the do you, window. Which but do, I'll... do you want to do first? Uh, we can go to the window and then to the wall. To the yeah. wall. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's so, really hot in here, don't you think? All right. So <laughs> I've got sweat dropping down my. Does balls everybody of my feet. want to go, or does somebody want to make a stealth check to get up there, sort of inconspicuously? Rogue. 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 <laughs> Twenty-one, please. Yay. 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 Avenir, using your natural rogue abilities, and uh, you are able to easily give the guards who are patrolling to make sure nobody's up to some funny stuff the slip, and you can clamber up there quietly, and you get up to that bog window. Uh, You can even look outside. You can see outside it is a sheer three-story drop, but now that you're up there, it's a realize it's a bigger broken window than you thought. It would be easy for a person to get through this, except for the whole three-story sheer drop. But there's like just a railing that you can walk up to on the other side, because you're here. Uh, do you want to make, uh, do you want to look around or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I would love to do an investigation check. Please do me an investigation check. Um, oh, and I for detail means that I do this just as a bonus action. Um, 24. 24. Nice. Uh, on that Jesus. excellent roll, you are going to notice more of that strange black dust. Oh, this is a... more of that strange black dust. I'm sure it's not. Yeah. yeah, strange black dust. Oh, it's clearly something. I keep yeah, mentioning I... it. Is it this is the dust that like? Yeah, this is this is this, like this is the unstable like... dust. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is new then. Yes. I. Uh, yeah, I I will try to get a sample of it. I'll I don't know dip a pen into it. Perfect. Great. Um. You were able to get a sample of the black dust and you were able to sneak down and rejoin your party and relay this information without anybody being the wiser. Yeah, you just act like you're supposed to be there. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, here's a ladder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's your. I, I, it's I your... imagine Avenir's rogueness comes from mainly just knowing how to navigate all kinds of social situations. That it's actually your... is a really cool idea. Yeah. Outside of conversations. Yeah, <laughs> it's your inconspicuous casual clothes. Yes, definitely. Yes. <laughs> Which are still cool. I've got my cuffed jeans <laughs> and your vegan leather jacket. Yeah. All right. Uh, so would you like to go to the VIP area now? Yeah, that seems good. All right, there's a big gruel guy at the VIP area, too. This is just a regular ogre, not a centaur. Once again, he's got, looks like he's seen some stuff, we'll say. Do you want to try to chat him off or anything like that? Or So, man, how's your, night, how's your night going? Oh, fine. What can I do for you? Oh, we got boss's orders to come on in. Oh, yeah. Got a blessing to pass on, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh... Avenir, can you show this fine gentleman the papers? Hmm. One second. And he's going to come back, and he's going to... Another... Uh, this, this, this is uh, a big rule lady. There's all, they're always working in teams. She's going to, she's going to come <laughs> and she's just going to, while he checks something, she's just going to make sure nobody else can get in. Does, okay. They don't abandon Out of curios- curiosity, um, do they have the same markings as the gruel clan we visited in? I was curious about By that. law and order mm-hmm. one? Yeah. They do. Same clan? Yeah. Same clan. <gasps> How, oh God, who was the guy who beat the piss out of me? <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the, uh, the ogre that I had to fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let I mean, me look I up his name. I imagine Avenir remembers his name, but I'm like, hey, how's he doing? You know what? We'll say that We'll say that he's around here somewhere. Maybe this is not this guy, so you can greet him by name when we get there. I don't remember his name either, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. but I can look it up for I you. I remember we caused quite a kerfuffle in the gruel zone. Yeah, yeah. But, but we you could got have their... caused so much worse. Yes. But you mm-hmm. got their respect after all because you believed in what you were standing up for, mm-hmm. and you... And you did a trial by combat where you where you didn't immediately get killed. Yeah, and which... haven't you got the blessing of several false teeth now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I got to do the uh, the the um, what was it? WWE 2K6. Yeah, <laughs> glitch thumbs up. <laughs> that was the referee. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. So after after a couple after like a couple minutes, the first ogre is going to come back. And then the, he's going to nod, and the, the lady gruel person, I just have a whole bunch of them, they all just have the same horrific stat block, uh, is going to be like, mm-hmm. and you come in and you go into the VIP area, which is pretty quiet right now, but there is a free bar. Let's go. And there's some couches and stuff that have been brought in, mm. and then there's some very... Drinking and sitting. So far we're in my <laughs> two favorite things. Yeah, and you can see there's some really cool looking people that are here there's uh there's and you these these are the bands oh uh, oh we're in the green room oh this is this is my favorite thing hobnobbing with people who are famous that i don't know who they are all right well so humble them <laughs> so you're in the vip area what I'm do you want to do bar. you want going to the bar going to the bar all right there is uh this is a non uh this is a non gruel bartender because they're just like you know uh, beer sense. smash so this is just some person who's mi- mixing drinks and he's going to say, what do you want? I can give you a beer. I can give you the special cocktail. What's, What's a special, special cocktail? <laughs> we say in unison. <laughs> oh, it's a, uh, we'll say it's the house special and it's after sausage and a shot of liquor. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I'll take a beer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take four of those and a beer for me. All right. And I don't know what you guys are getting. Uh, a beer. Yeah. 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 He gives you a beer. You get your five drinks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Avenir. Do you tap- have anything without any calories? No. <laughs> v, if you want non-alcoholic drinks, you can have some. Oh, I didn't say yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. You can just have straight. Do you have like liquor, mono white claws. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> We could, yeah, yeah, no, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I guess, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, we got some white claws. Ain't no laws with mono white claws. Restricted loco, except for rule of law, of yeah. course. Yeah, he'll hand you a, a mono white claws. Nice. Restricted loco. Well, you can't have that's, four that's of loco. Guy, no, that's a you good one. Like vodka that, and a red blue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Enor, what would you want? Straight beer. Straight beer. So you have a beer. All right, you've drank. Mm-hmm. 
there's that's that's basically you can get free alcohol there but Great. you know you've gotten free alcohol you can talk to some of the bands there's there's like a, a big group of people that all have like those kinds of haircuts you saw in the mind grind where it's like it's long in the back and short in the front it would make all of you look terrible but they look extremely cool there's mm. a couple of like guys with beards and like dark eyes uh there's like a couple there's like three very bored looking people but they're mm. like bored in that you know classy european kind of way right it's <laughs> definitely a fashion mullet yeah is uh are they like what is the vibe of them? Would we be intruding? Do you I'm going to strike up a conversation with one of them right now. With the fashion mullet kids? Anyone. Okay, well, pick a band. Uh, one of the dark, yeah, one of the dark uh, bearded ones. One of the dark bearded ones? Yeah. Well, there are a couple of quite morose fellows who are just sort of sitting there uh, fiddling with a couple of synths, and they're going to say, can we help you? Cool sounds. Oh, yes. What are you here for? <laughs> We're here to play, they say. <laughs> and what are you here for? Oh, uh, we're just in the middle of an investigation. <laughs> Fuck. What the... Dude. <laughs> Dude. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, we're yes. following a teenage girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's three strikes. You're out of there. I mean, I think hey, hey, you... now, now before you say anything, we did make a fake cop. So <laughs> it looked cool. <laughs> We, I mean, if you probably make a kerfuffle, you will be thrown out of the VIP yeah. area, yeah. post-haste. Uh, uh, and they say, oh, that's very interesting. And they're kind of trying to, they're going to do that thing where they say, they kind of acknowledge you and then they stop talking to you and they ignore you, but they're not like outwardly rude to you. They just are like, don't, 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 don't be a booth barnacle. <laughs> oh, no, I have no idea who these people are. I'm just trying to make conversation. All right. Do you want to, do you want to go talk to any of the other bands? The well, bands with the mullets. Not up to the most plucky. The, the, the band with the mullets I am on is my the most the whole time as oh yeah <laughs> these <laughs> hey the, the kids with the mullets are just a bunch of punks it, oh yeah so they're like chugging beers and, ah, yeah, they, I, I, I roll up to them and go what's up fellas and are they sorry are they all no no they're, uh, they're a group of mixed gender individuals what's up gang hey what's up sounds like you, it sounds like you're having a pretty good pre-show party hell yeah it's gonna be a rager what's their band name do I know uh, you, there's no way you would know, but you can you can look at the poster and you can You're see yeah. you can <laughs> see that the opening band is Zossel, Beastie, yeah. and Garana, who are not back here because they have to get ready mm -hmm. because they're the least cool people, mm -hmm. and that's Gang of Three. Yeah. One of these bands is Happy Obsidays. One is New Border, and one is the Doretti <laughs> Column. <laughs> okay, so it's definitely not New Border. <laughs> <laughs> You look so proud of yourself. <laughs> new, new border is very. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm very excited for whoever is getting these jokes. How does it feel to make a joke that good? Uh, I mean, I did. You know, it's it's good, but also you know that you may never top it, and this may be the peak of your creative <laughs> career. All right. So you know. Ah, uh, my. Welcome to your Zippo tricks, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so the lead singer of the band that you're talking to is a she's got platinum blonde hair and she's got a dark shirt and she's that's ripped in like excitingly stylish places and she's got dark leather pants and she's got like dark eyeliner on and she's got kind of like a gravelly cool voice she looks extremely cool and extremely hot and there's no other way to describe her is there so the other the other two were happy 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 o there's happy obs days new border and the Doretti column the Doretti column. I'm trying to think who the Doretti column yeah, is. It's the Doretti column. I went very, very obscure so, for the bands. I actually haven't heard your guys' sound before, but you, 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 you look like you're going to put on a great show. Oh, my God. Just wait. None of our songs are longer than two minutes faster. <laughs> oh, yeah. two All minutes. right. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to like this. These, these, are, these are a real group of punk kids. Uh, this is classic punk rock they you, play. Have you played in town before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, we do some Ravdigan tours, but it's pretty exciting to play here because this is the hottest show, apparently, in the entire 6th District. And they got that DJ coming in later. A DJ? Yeah. I haven't heard about this. Yeah, it's new music, off-plane. Off-plane? Yeah. Do we know where from? Mm -hmm. Wow. What, what, what's their I mean, name? Uh, DJ Reday. Reday. Eh, it doesn't give me anything. R I or R E? It on the poster. It's R E E and then a capital D and a capital A Y. 
Well, that's really exciting. Sounds like it's going to be a hell of a show. Yeah, it's going to be great. You watch up front and catch our set. It's going to be great. Yeah. And as you are doing this, two large, gruel hands tap you on the shoulder, slock and nog, because I assume that you are there. And you turn around, and there's a familiar face flanked by his entourage as he never goes anywhere no, without no, his no, guards. No, 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 no. It's no, the no. twin! No. <laughs> dressed in casual, non-gilded clothing. <sighs> God, he's even dressed like he's going to a Caligula-themed Caligula party. <laughs> yeah. I just said put him in casual clothes. He's True in a casual. Good, he's in a good mood. You haven't made him angry. That's good. Yeah, and he's going to say, Oh, hello, everybody. You all seem to be having fun. Come with me back to my private booth, and you're going to be given very little choice in the matter. You're all going to be escorted back to a private booth so he can sit down and put his feet up so Kathy can get into character. <laughs> Sounds fun and mandatory. <laughs> yeah, well, he owns this place. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, at least he's rented it for the evening at no small expense to put on this incredibly cool concert. And he's going to say, Now, I, Avenir, I was so surprised to receive your letter. What are you doing? We are trying to solve what we thought was a murder. Oh, yes. Of the man who owned this place. Oh. You know, the one whose deed went missing from your vault? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I rented this place to throw a party. And I think it's going, I think it's going quite well. Well, if you're happy, we're happy. Oh, fantastic. Are you going to catch the show? I insist that you watch the concert. I figured, you know, since we're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, you know, we're off I'm, the clock right now. And I'm, it's not like we're... <laughs> yeah, I'm especially interested in the last act. Oh, my God. The, the Duretti column? They are wild. They put on such a good show. No, the one after that. DJ Reday. Oh, you've heard. I have. Pray tell, what can you tell of... <laughs> No, I like no, no, I like this new slock. <laughs> Forsooth. Forsooth, pray tell. <laughs> Forsooth, pray tell. Uh, for what greets us after the sun sets oh. and the music stops. I uh, feel like those five drinks you had <laughs> in a minute uh, started to <laughs> affect you already. All right, so as, he, as he's going to say, he's just going to say he's going to be like, oh, it is. I mean... Obviously, we don't get music like that around here, so I'm feeling very excited to like bring some new culture to Ravnica. And he's gonna be everybody make me a perception check about how Ogivin is acting right now. 14. Seven, 17. Uh, 14. Um, 23. Is it smug? <laughs> Please, it's smug, right? It's, it's not smug. smug. It's, really? So, how many times did it take you to get this sort of concert right? I've been running it here for a few months, and I'd say we've really settled into a great rhythm. Uh, you, on a 23, he's not smug. There's little hearts in his eyes. He's not smug. He's in he's love. He's gay. Are we going to fight? did we, he break are, up with the warboard? I was going to... He, he, you asked him how the war yeah. went, and he went, he went, he told you earlier. He's like, oh, I've got a new partner. Yeah, He's he on right. a major plane. I remember, I, remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got a new boy now. Yeah. He didn't say boy. He said, I have a new partner. Oh. He was very nondescript about that. Mm. So, but yes, you can see that as soon as you mentioned DJ uh, Rade, by the DJ way. DJ Rade. But people wouldn't know how to pronounce their name, so it's fine. Uh, and uh, he's just going to say, oh, just wait. It's so good. Do you it's mind so if I good. Ask how you met them? I met them at a concert, actually. Oh, in town? Mm hmm. Not one that I was hosting, but they're just, you know, a oh. person of good taste, we'll say. What concert? Uh, he's going to, I, you know, I hadn't thought about this, so I'm just going to say it's a band that you will have heard of. It's a cool band. Oh, cool band. Yeah, a cool band. And then we just got talking and we really felt a connection. And, and it turns out, Grave you know. Grave Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> not Grave Matthews. <laughs> 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 Uh, I hadn't thought of a band. Uh, why am I blanking on every single band in the world right now? Mm. Mm. Um, I don't know. It wasn't Grave Fathius. Tame Crovod. Tame Crovod? <laughs> ah, it's too mainstream. Yeah, uh, we'll no. say it was some sort of weird house party thing that Ogavan would go to. Hmm. So. 
Nope. Nope. Never mind. Anyhow, uh, yeah, after after a little after a little like chit chat and stuff like that, you will the music starts. <gasps> oh. So I have some I have some concert descriptions to read to you. And if anybody wants to go and watch the bands out front, you can. And then you can get back into the VIP area because they know you now. Can you see it from the VIP section? You can see it from the VIP section. So you don't have to go into the mosh pit if you don't want to. Slot goes to mosh. I was going to say Nog's 30. Yeah, put me in the pit. You know where Justin dance. Nog, Nog used to mosh all the time. We, <laughs> Nog, Nog bruises easily now. Uh, Slot has young 29 years. Old bones. Oh god. I mean, you're an elf. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. Twenty-nine is. Yeah. Are you allowed in here? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah, are you we'll old? And, is that why you're drinking? All have we been booting for you this entire time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't. Every time I try to get it myself, they tell me no. <laughs> Jesus. Smog is twelve. <laughs> Beauty. I assume you're twenty. You're the equivalent of whatever twenty-nine is in elf years. Nope. We're twelve. <laughs> yeah. How would you have a job at this? Well, because they asked how old I am, and I said 29. You know, on the farm, they generally, generally people uh, work a little bit earlier. Yeah, Sometimes they, that work is security. Basically, as soon as I could pick up Rod, I started working. I don't love that, you, that you're underage. <laughs> he can drive a tractor. Well, I'm underage in this custom set of customs. We have, I've been very clear. It's like, you know, it's under 20, but under 65 for loxodons, like for like age groups and stuff like yeah. that. Because so I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. You were young enough to go in the mosh pit, right? Yeah. Oh, You're, yeah. Okay. So Give the me first, that pit. I like how first, this is how we discover it, by the way. <laughs> yeah. DNI, DNI. Um, <laughs> the first band up is Gang of Three. Uh, and the crowd is sparse for this, but you're going to go and support your friends. And at first, it's just... Atonal drones and feedbacks fighting with one another over a lurching 7 8 drum beat. I love Simple Slipknot. This is Horse Lords. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But after a while, the noises start to coalesce and the audience starts to get into it as well. What starts out as disorienting slowly but surely becomes driving and rhythmic. And before you know it, the whole crowd is feeling it. They're vibing. The noises surge forward and just becomes another instrument in this whole melee of sounds that's coming and attacking you from the stage, but in a mm. good way. Meshuggogari. Is that anything? Mm. That's pretty sure, good. Yeah. yeah maybe, I that's like the, that. they, maybe that's the concert that they were at that they uh, met Mish Mashugogari? Yeah. Mashugogari. I also drank five beers before we started recording. <laughs> and you're 12, so you've got no <laughs> on top. So you should handle them by now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, after that, is a, they have a short set. I'll, I'll I'll go into the pit too. Okay, great. Oh, damn, yeah. let's go out yeah. here. All right, for you will you will get into the pit for happy obsides. This is that trio of exciting bored looking people. Uh, <laughs> first up, it's just some simple bass and synth that they set out sort of a pounding rhythm. It's like dun 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 dun, and then all of a sudden this very cool reverb guitar just comes in with these angular stabs, and then there's that's that kind of very smooth half talking half singing yet totally captivating sound mm -hmm. very like danceable and stuff and the the songs build and swell and it you feel engulfed in avenir you feel cooler just from being from seeing this it almost sounds like you're just in like a mosh pit for the talking heads <laughs> uh, of montreal uh, you, yeah. Get, yeah. Yeah. you get inspiration because you like <gasps> this band so much cool all right i get it just like yeah the, um nobody gets inspiration all, from gang of three it's just a bunch of elephant the, six groups together it's the always sunny crash zoom on danny devito i get it <laughs> all right third band comes up they, they're churning them through but it's you know you there's drinking and stuff like that this is this is kathleen's fantasy concert so once the music starts you don't have to wait around for 40 minutes between sets it's great <laughs> wow <sighs> man the roadies must be really on their game <laughs> they're all professionals uh, and they're all being paid well because Ogavan's a good employer because it's my game and I can do what I want. Anyhow, new border. This is those two morose looking people that you identified oh. before. Uh, they uh, they set, have set up behind matching plasma synths that are hooked up to a variety of black market is it sound modulators. I'm sad I can't look at their synths anymore. Do you want to go up and see if you can get into the and watch them closer? Uh, hit the sure. pit, my dude. Hit the pit. <laughs> 
All right. The set starts suddenly as a pounding, distorted 4-4 beat erupts from one keyboard. Wham, 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 wham. And then a screaming wall of mangled guitars launches out of the other. But the effect, combined with the strobing lights, is rather like being throttled. Overwhelmed, your brain wisely decides it doesn't actually need to bother processing this part. And then Enor, when you gradually become aware of your surroundings again, the sweat is over and drenched. You're, the set is over and you're drenched in sweat. Several people high five you and say nice moves. Oh, I'm so glad I don't need to do this to myself anymore. You get inspiration. All right, the final band is ready to take the stage. It's those cool-looking uh, punks that have strangely ravnic and Australian accents. Uh, and uh, they, uh, they're, they're, they're petite lead singer you can just feel waves of charisma rolling off her as she stalks up to the stage. She grabs the microphone and begins and ducks her head and then just screams and the crowd goes ballistic. Suddenly, everything is a mosh pit around you. Uh, they whip through songs. None of them are longer than two minutes long. The crowd is hollering along. Wallets are flying. Tins of swamp ball crease are careening through the air. Uh, uh, the Ravican equivalent of like notepads, chapstick, everything. This is pandemonium. The whole crowd is here, and they are amped for this. At this uh, point, Nog kind of looks down from the VIP area and is like, Where's Valencia? And he just looks up and sees Valencia crowd surfing Correct. during, Correct. during the, oh. the Nog, make me a perception check. Uh, 19. 19. You uh, also think you see Columbo at the back of the audience. <laughs> uh, and then you see Very taste. crowd surf by and she's just hollering and screaming. And everybody's having an incredible time. Uh, uh, does it, so who's, who's in the pit for this one? All right, you get you now. You get some inspiration, Ooh. Uh, and then eventually their set is over, and then people rush from the stage uh, to grab water from the bar and wring out their shirts, uh, but then back because they don't want to lose their spots at the front, even though this is technically the last band. A large gruel centaur comes up onto the stage and says, "Hey, hey, hey! I've got a wallet here! I've got a wallet here! You know who's lost a wallet? It's like, all right, give me the name." You know, and he's, he's trying to mm. reunite people with their lost valuables, essentially, because the crowd was that violent. Good show. Yeah. Love this, a healthy pit. This is, mm. this is my, this is my <laughs> Ideal show. show. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, but once the set is over, everybody who's still standing out there is going to feel a familiar tap. And you're going to be, come back to the VIP area. So... And you can come back and you can talk to Ogden again. I appreciate I know which NPC wants to talk to us again, but this is the only NPC that Kathleen raises her leg. <laughs> it's important to get into his shitty oh, I attitude. Love I love it. Mm. That was a great show. Oh, thank you. I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out as usual. Any more compliments for me? <laughs> uh, your hair looks nice. Oh, thank you. That's You're a good fit. Avenir is 1,000% saturated with sweat. As so so would most people be. It's yeah. kind of smelly in here. It's hot now. Yeah. Uh, somehow Ogavin looks cool, like, temperature-wise and just cool. It's so and, frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> Clerics, people, man. People, people who are, like, super good looking who don't overheat, and so they just always look good all the time. Mm-hmm. So while he's while he's uh, while he's uh, hearing compliments from you, uh, he will you will actually everybody make me a perception check. Twenty three. Twenty three. Six. He's. You get the feeling that he's brought you back here to keep an eye on you. Hmm. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> oh, that's no, no. <laughs> hey, you do. You get the idea that he's brought you back here to be friendly, but also to keep an eye on you. Uh, and you notice that his eyes keep flicking to that window. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the window with the... The window that Avenir investigated earlier oh. with the broken... With the broken uh, bar. And, uh... Slock, what are you saying to him? Um, I mean, honestly, I couldn't get away with something as breezy as what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. It looks like it allows for, you know... A lot of airflow, mm -hmm. not really restricting, mm -hmm. but I would feel a little, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, like <laughs> I have a question <laughs> while that's going on. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna interrupt oh. Slock and shush him. So what's your out of? Did uh, did they grab Valencia to come back? 
Yeah, Valencia's with you guys. Okay. Well, while they're going, could I try and whisper and like say like, hey, go, go stand over by that wall and see what you can see. Absolutely, she'll go over there. Okay. So she's going to go over by the wall and see what she can see. Uh, and uh, as, as he starts shushing you, his eyes light up. And a huge smile breaks across his face. Not the smug smile that Featherweight's drawn him with, but a legitimate one. And from the window, a mysterious figure wearing a dark cloak emerges. And a strange, almost thopter-like set of blades spring from their back. And they absolutely gently as a feather. Valencia's going to see this and be like, <laughs> what do you want me to do, boss? This makes sense why there was a Kaladesh reference at the start of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, that is a very interesting detail yeah, to throw yeah, in during yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're going to land perfectly silently and they're going to walk perfectly <laughs> silently across yeah. the warehouse. And Ogavin is going to ignore all of you guys and he's going to say, Riday! And he's going to rush over to the mysterious figure and they are going to embrace and this is what the mysterious figure looks like and they're gonna have a little conversation how's my timing darling not too late not too early oh perfect as usual says ogavin ogavin plucks their hand from beneath their cloak and caresses it and then plants a delicate kiss on the palm of their hand it's they're honestly very cute. romantic they're, they're really very cute, cute together this is, and you see that Re- i feel like i shouldn't be watching the <laughs> day has very has 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 dark dark gray skin and does anybody want to is it so? You are are you averting your eyes because it would be impolite, or is anybody watching this? Oh, I'm yeah. staring. I mean, this is like this. Is, I mean, I feel like I should. I definitely keep watching. This okay. is like soap opera TV. This is soap opera TV, and a small wisp of black dust tumbles to the floor from Reday's <sighs> hand. A, they're an aether. They're, they're an aether born. It's the half life. Yeah, right? yeah. They, yeah. The whole crowd is waiting, my darling. Uh, oh dear. The whole crowd is waiting, but maybe they could wait a little longer. Oh, but darling. My public awaits. Besides, I've got some exciting news to tell you afterwards. My family is thrilled. We can barely keep up with the orders. <gasps> they love you. And Ogavan pulls the cloaked figure into an embrace, planting a series of kisses along their neck. But I love you. And then he looks up at all of you and says, What? <sighs> oh, please. Gay? <laughs> <laughs> and then... Th- 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rita is going to pull down their hood and look at you and say, Hi! <laughs> Hi! Hi! Hey. It's so nice to meet you. You know, o- Ogvin's, uh, uh, well, honestly, they haven't said much, but yeah. it's very nice to meet you, finally. Yes, hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, anyhow, I have a thing to do, so ta-ta! And Rita, obviously very conscious of their look. Mm-hmm. Uh, is going to pop their cloak back up and make their way back to the stage to huge and rapturous cheering. And they take their place behind this strange device you've never seen before with two black discs attached to it. Then <laughs> <laughs> they slowly place a strange headband that seems to have two cups on either side over their hood. And music like you've never heard before suddenly bursts forth from the speakers and the crowd once again goes wild. But this is like less moshing and more just people like, and the music goes ooms, 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 make it better, do it faster, make it stronger. Rapunzel, I can't hear you. And Ogden comes over to you and he says, "Holding you." Oh, not in his not in his casual clothes. He says, "You know, on a you know, on Kaladesh they call this a rave." The birds. You should go down there turn down the music and say, "This is a boiler room exclusive." Then turn it back up. He, I'll take well, that idea <laughs> under advisement. Tell them you're going to do another one, regardless of whether or not you're going to. Oh, we plan to saying it. I plan to do ones here quite a bit because this is extremely profitable and it's a great venue. It's also convenient for a day. So, what? And, Why is that? This is how he gets. It's how they get here. What do you mean, like the, specifically in the sausage factory? Well, it's just the closest building. To the omen path. To the omen path mm-hmm. that's in the bar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's not really suitable for anyone else, unfortunately. But, you know, Rade doesn't have much trouble getting through. And anyhow, you're having a polite conversation with Ogavin. Ogavin's not a bad guy. He's he's very... Well, 
<laughs> they, he's he's been he's nothing a, but nice to you not, guys. He's a banker. <laughs> There's a difference between being not bad and being good. I'm just saying, my <laughs> landlord's a pretty nice guy. Well, he's still a landlord. <laughs> I will say, from Ogavin's point of view, that you've that the only time that you've met him, you've been returning him to the Orzov, which he ran away from, and now mm. he has a job he doesn't want because his sister's been promoted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he's a very nice man. He's a man I keep running into. <laughs> yes, he's got his own agenda, uh, and he just happens. To, but he also happens to be financially well set up, and so why not just run a really successful and music promotion business dick. for him and his friends? I like him more now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a, a new a new yeah. perspective it, has opened up on him. Being in love changes people. That's you know? true. So as so as this is happening, you're having a lovely conversation, and the music is so loud, and the dancing is so frantic that you almost don't hear the explosion. Not at first, at Woo! least. The ground rumbles and shakes, but that's not really unusual because a lot of people are jumping up and down and the music is literally making the whole place vibrate. Um, but the whole place starts to rumble and shake in a much more significant way. And then the outside wall of the factory falls off and not to the ground, but into nothingness with only fire behind it mm. into a giant sinkhole that has suddenly opened up and is racing across the warehouse floor to the stage. The stinking night air of the bog rushes in all at once, cold and fetid. Uh, immediately, people start screaming. Fire starts to lick up the sides of the warehouse. Ogavin and Entourage scatter, and suddenly the house lights flick up, and all, and all these grill people start wrangling the crowd, screaming, out, out, everyone out. Don't worry about touching anything. Just go. And people are leaving. Reday launches themselves from the stage with an honest, with an inc- with an impossible leap, their feet leaving the stage seconds before it collapses out underneath them into the sinkhole. Do you guys want to run away or do you want to investigate what's happening? Both. <laughs> does it d- does it seem like the disintegration is happening at such a rate where we can do any investigation? Uh you can definitely run towards the sinkhole and the fire and the explosion that's come from the bog. Yeah. Yeah. Let's sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you uh, all rush to investigate then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Against our better judgment, danger. probably. <laughs> Whoa, um, fire and a hole. I mean, actually, while we're doing this, uh, do I see Veracity and her friend? Uh, they're being hustled out the door by a bunch of gruel people. Okay, great. As long as they're safe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the, the like, people... We were hired nominally. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't want any kids getting hurt. I've seen them. We can find them again later with my uh, magic. That's true. You still have uh, Valencia. Still knows her smell from her sweater, which was mm-hmm. ethically obtained. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so a huge uh, the the warehouse is currently on fire, getting sucked uh, into a hole. There is a getting sucked into a hole, which has sucked up the stage. You see, Rita take an impossibly delicate leap and and they just clear the stage as the stage crumples up underneath them and they just take a booker and uh a sinkhole the sinkhole stops spreading and you and there's dust in the air and smoke and fire and you look over the side and in the swirling dust you see the outline of an enormous cavern that was underneath the after sausage factory that nobody knew about the walls and the floor are damp and covered with tens of thousands of mushrooms. And at this point, you will recognize these mushrooms almost. They are perfectly round and they glow and the caps have are red with spots on them. So there are caps. giant ones the size of kitchen tables and tiny ones the size of thimbles. These, these are the superior zoom caps that they have been trying to grow. All of them hum with a faint purple light. And who can detect magic here? I don't know that I can. Well, uh, oh, wait, it's I can. A, well, yeah. Yeah, I have detect magic. Okay. You detect magic. You, it is, you cast detect magic and it is almost overwhelming. You almost want to step back and avert your eyes because there is magic streaming out of the floor here. An overwhelming amount that just pulses forth relentlessly. And as you sort of get used to it, it slowly resolves itself into two competing currents. There is a foul, malevolent, 
oozing magic, purple and thick, bubbling up from the floor. It is sticky and dark. And there's a flickering, pulsing current over top of it, almost like a net, strained and taut and bright and good. Is this like the 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 membrane, I guess, between the planes? No, no. I guess. <laughs> but okay. right. yeah. no, but uh, it is... Yeah, you it miss is, 100% of the shots you don't take. Wave yep, Gretzky, yep, yep. 99, I mean, let's go. It's, 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 it's not really possible to tell you what is going on, but you're going to find out pretty quick. You look, at the, you look at these, you look at the mushrooms, and just from overhead, you hear, Zossel, you've got to be kidding me. Zossel is trying to get one of these mushrooms. He's like, it's a superior zoom cap. And he drags off as like they're evacuating. <laughs> but... Uh, the rubble of the stage is at the back. Do you want to hop down into this cavern? Yeah. 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 Well, this could do. Can we land on a mushroom? You, you can <laughs> land on a mushroom. It poofs um, out. Hey. And this and is all horrors. naturally growing. This right? is all naturally occurring, feeding off the incredible amount of magical energy that's that we, is centered here. We yes. got from the yeah. professor, right? Yeah. It was yeah. that like, they can only grow in... Magically super magical yes. and so the, the professor was aiming pure magic lights at these and your zoom caps were like little spindly mm -hmm. things his were like normal normal things these are just like little little red orbs this is what they want to look like right this is this is their they want perfect to be plump. form they want to be plump and juicy and they're just feeding off they don't need light they need magical energy so much magical energy this is the only place that they would grow what are the effects of one of these mushrooms. Now that I know you're 12, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on. That ship has sailed. Uh, they would be intense. Let's okay. just put it that way. All right. Uh, you, you know what? I did plan if you wanted to eat them. I mean, can I pocket one of them? Absolutely. All right. Slock Zossel's pockets. trying to pocket one. He just <laughs> slock, got dragged away by slock a Slock pockets one. four of them. Okay, of great. the smaller ones that can... You, you know, I'm sorry, I, I'm just thinking out loud. I do wonder if this magical field might have had something to do with the effects of the after sausage uh, drink itself. They did keep going on about the terroir of the mm -hmm, place yeah. and how it actually does seem to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, did Rade, this is where Rade came through? Yeah, or they, comes through? Yeah, yeah. well, not where? through this cavern. They come, come, through, the the, they come through the window. Right. This right. cavern nobody knew about. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, where did they, like you said, they jumped up. Where did they actually end up landing? Like, they, just they're, they're, they're running away. They're running away okay, with everybody okay. else. Everybody else is escaping. I was escaping. like, did they just hop back in the sinkhole or something? No, no, no. They're, everybody's clearing out uh, wisely. Only only five foolish beings have run into this yeah. thing. Uh, but you That's hop us. down into the cavern, sort of landing on these bouncy, glowing, pulsing mushrooms. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the rubble of the stage is behind you, and then there's fire coming from the bog, uh, and things are shaking, and there's smoke, and there's so much dust in the air because this whole area has just caved in, so there's dust and everything. Uh, but you see a single figure stalking towards you, silhouetted against the flames and the dust. He is tall and lean. Avenir, is that you? <laughs> He's right beside you. Huh? Oh. You sure you haven't taken any of these mushrooms yet? <laughs> but he has bright purple skin. Probably also a health bar that's immense. It's, it's you! The... <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's huge! And he is screaming because he is stripping balls. And he is going, and he's saying this. <clears throat> well, oh boy, there's nothing here. You threw your life away for a fairy tale. I told you so. And he looks at you, and he locks eyes with all four of you and says, you bumbling idiots, what are you doing here? Uh, well, Party. Grimace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> having a better night than you, Yeah, obviously. we were having a drink. We got to go to the cool kids club. Yeah. I met some new people. Well, uh, it's nice for you. Thank you. I am burning this wretched bog and this disgusting factory to the ground once and for all to prove that Obart Zonak was a fool. I mean, we probably 
Good. Zun- this is why he killed the. It did Zunak kill sausage in the sixth district, because he just said. Oh, because he this he, is like he just weird. said like he thought. Yeah, he was onto something with this. He believed everything that doddering old moron Propnos did. Magic, bah. <laughs> He thought there might be an old god here, but there's nothing. There's no pigs. There's no moles. Nothing. <laughs> oh, oh, come on out, old gods. Wham, wham, wham. Stomping on the ground, kicking rubble. I know you're hiding in there, you giant ill-tempered <laughs> muskrat. Come on out wherever you are. Come on, giant parrot. Nothing happens. F- flames, the dust is settling. Maybe you just haven't said the right animal yet. You see? Oh, Bart, you left me. You abandoned me. You left, and there's... And there's... There's nothing. I chew. What are the penguins? Hey, there. Penguins, penguins out of your penguins. system. G- Gorev? Gorev? At, at, at this point, several things are going to happen at once. Uh-huh. First, he's going to sneeze, and there's a translucent purple vapor cloud that's going to erupt from him, and it's going to engulf you all. Cover your nose, your mouth, man. Yeah, Second, went through years of this. <laughs> nobody else is going to notice this but you, Nog. Oh, great, because I can see magic. You can, as this is happening, you feel that tight, taut grid of magic flex and tense and strain, and you can just tell that whatever has happened in the bog with the fire and the explosion has weakened it even more, and you feel it snap. And a wave of evil energy starts pouring out from the floor underneath of you, and you it brings with it this sulfurous, stinking, bile-colored water. You look down, Nog, because you're the only one who sees this, and the water is already around your ankles. It's that fast, and it moves in an unpleasant and evil way. We should exit the premises. What? That, that is happening. And Bruna finally recovers from his sneeze. He doesn't even notice the rapidly wise, rising water. As I, as I don't think know anybody else would too, because this is happening basically almost simultaneously. Uh, and he wipes his nose and he looks at you and he raises his finger and he opens his mouth and he's immediately crushed by a giant, giant tentacle made of hideous vines. <laughs> And nothing, Bummer. and nothing of value is lost. And then... Wait, how are we going to get paid? A tidal wave of ichor erupts from the floor, <laughs> flinging you all in random directions. Wow! Everybody, I would like everybody to make me two saves. A constitution save and an athletics save. Okay. Uh, oh, that sucks. <laughs> well, that sucks. Okay. Can I do acrobatics in lieu of... Yes, you can okay. do acrobatics in lieu of athletics. Or dext- a, like a dexterity you save. You can do a dexterity save. Basically, this is a save against because this, a tidal wave of evil black ichor water is going to suddenly erupt out from the ground because whatever was holding that in place has broken and it is now free. Con- Someone backed up the plane. <laughs> Con and oh, what? Oh, athletics. Uh, Con and athletics. Oh, no. At this rate, I'll make a save sometime next year. If you had to, if you had to fail one of these, I would say the con oh. save is the more amusing one to fail. Uh, I, I failed both of them, so okay. no yeah. worries. I rolled a one on the con save. Okay. I rolled an eight for both. I rolled 17 for con, 10 for strength. 18 on con, 15 on F. Okay, so who failed? Do, I, do you want me to roll for Valencia, too? Avenir, this is for you. No, Valencia is fine. She's got dog armor. Uh, this is what you get. Uh-oh. Uh, and we're going to change two people's artwork. We're going to change uh, We're gonna change uh, Avenir and uh, Nog's artwork. What? Because you have been affected by ah! the spores. <laughs> and you are going to trip balls for the next 10 minutes. And I don't know if this is what you see. <laughs> <laughs> man <laughs> But this is what you perceive. This is my faithful yeah. dog, Nog. <laughs> At this point, and if I anybody say, wanted to man. use some inspiration and try to fail that con save, now I'll is the time. I'll use inspiration. 
Uh, that was out of this. Cool. That is absolutely a 10. So that's, that's a uh, 10. round down. Oh, nine. Excuse me. That's a nine. So we can change everybody else's art now. This is why I made sure that we had inspiration. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> there we, yeah, that, there we go. Keep on trucking. So... Jughead of the in, e eternal realms. <laughs> So, who's, what, who's, whose face is that on his junk? I, that's, that's, I'll give you three guesses, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's basically, from the, the Hot Springs episode of yeah. uh, um, oh, Road, 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 Road Quest. Quest. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is canon. Yeah. yeah, so what happened was I told Featherweight that uh, because somebody decided to feed Gorev Bruna a doofin mushroom, which we, as we recall was designed by Dale and would do a thing that if you inhaled the spores after the victim sneezed that you if you failed a constitution save you would be affected by an incredibly powerful right. hallucination that would last for the next 10 minutes and i said featherweight wouldn't it be great if because they're also in a nexus of magical ravnican ley line energy that if they could actually get some magical powers from this based on what they what their perceptions are when they're just tripping balls on the doofin spores so i said featherweight could you draw me some art and then based on the art that he he drew me i gave you some extremely exciting powers that you can use these are all very high level uh some of them some of you have changes to your base stats for mm -hmm. the duration mm -hmm. uh some of you just have cool spells that you can use and some of you have a physical transformation i got beefy <laughs> <laughs> i uh, got 10 minutes on my clock so i might as well cast my spell right now mm -hmm. i'm going to become astrally invulnerable to all damage for the next 10 minutes wow or until the spell ends i assume that might happen do you want to read the description yeah right now i am enor form of the multiverse for the next 10 minutes i now have the following abilities my corporeal body becomes one with the blind eternities the space between matter and reality I can no longer be grappled or restrained. I am no longer impeded by rough terrain and environmental effects will not break my concentration. And I also know the following spell, Astral Invulnerability, which I have now cast without a spell slot due to this effect. Uh, anybody else want to read out their fun surprise? I have, by the power of, Ragn <laughs> of Ravnica, <laughs> uh, for the next 10 minutes, uh, my base... My base dex and strength is increased by two. Uh, I gain 15 temporary hit points. I have advantage on all strength and animal saving throws. And I can do a Ravnica smite once. Um, when I hit my next melee attack, the damage is 4d6 psychic damage. And, the and, and they have to make a wisdom saving throw. If they fail it, they now have a disadvantage on all attack rolls and ability checks and can't make reactions. S strictly strictly better mind spike. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna beat the crap out of whatever is coming out of this hole. Uh, who else wants to read their fun surprise? I have a whole sheet of paper. You have so much. <laughs> so, you, I mean you yeah. became Dr. Slock Hat. <laughs> <laughs> I am tired of Ravnica. I am tired of these people. It's uh, 2006. I am drafting Dark Confidant. <laughs> <laughs> my opponent to my right passes me the second Dimmer Aqueduct of the draft. <laughs> I think of my first girlfriend. It is 2026. <laughs> um, so, Slock, one with the ley line. For the next 10 minutes, I now have the following abilities. I now hover instead of standing. Base wisdom stat is increased by five. Jesus. And I have ley lines vengeance. Vengeance. I can now see and manipulate the magic of Ravnica's ley lines, including the hidden ley line underneath the overbog. I can cast a spell once. I don't roll for it. it. It happens. It's so much. A churning storm cloud forms center on a point you can see and spreading to a radius of 100 feet. Lightning flashes in the area. Thunder booms and strong winds roar. Each creature under the cloud, no more than 5,000 feet beneath the cloud, when it appears must take a constitution, must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, a creature takes 2d6 thunder damage and becomes deafened for five minutes. Each round, I maintain concentration of the spell. The storm produces additional effects on my turn. Round two, I call six bolts of lightning from the cloud to strike the creatures or objects of my choice. Any given creature or object that can't be struck by uh, more than one bolt, a struck creature must make a deck saving throw. The creature takes 10d6 
That's not a typo, right? No. <laughs> the creature takes 10d6 lightning damage on a failed save, or half as much as a su- on a successful one. Round three, <laughs> hailstones rain down from the cloud. Each creature under the cloud takes 2d6 bludgeoning damage. Remember, each creature. Each Yes. Yes. Round four to six, gusts and freezing rain assail the area under the cloud. The area becomes difficult terrain and is heavily obscured. Each creature there takes 1d6 cold damage. Ranged weapon attacks in the area are impossible. The wind and rain count as a severe distraction for the purposes of maintaining concentration on spells. Finally, gusts of strong wind ranging from 20 to 50 miles per hour automatically disperse fog, mist, and similar phenomena in the area, whether mundane or magical. See the next page for part two. No. <laughs> yeah. That's a so that's very powerful and sort of unfocused, but you're just channeling the raw fury of Ravnica because it's very pissed off right now. I'm very glad you gave me a sheet this long because I believe in this playthrough alone I've asked how do I roll die to attack? Yep. <laughs> this is very I tried I tried to give you something that would be very straightforward. It just happens if you want it to, but it has some drawbacks. But not for you, you know, I you was just cannot. About, I was going to mention that, but I wanted to get <laughs> We should go beat the shit out of Niv Mizzet. <laughs> <laughs> well, he won't be the living guild for too long. <laughs> Avenir, what do you get? I have Avenir Aspect of Azor. For the next 10 minutes, you now have the following abilities. You feel Azor's magic flow into you, aiding you in your fight to protect Ravnica. You can now fly at a speed of 60 feet. You can no longer be charmed or frightened. Your passive perception is now 25. You have the following ability, which you can use in place of a normal action for the turn. Supreme Legal Authority. You choose a target you can see within 90 feet of you. The target must succeed on a DC 23 intelligence saving throw. Or you can choose an action from the following list. Attack, dodge, cast a spell, disengage, help, hide, search, or use an object. The affected targets cannot take that action for the next minute, or one complete round of combat, whichever ends later. He's a control mage. At the end of the target's turn, it can end the effect on itself with a DC 23 int saving throw. A target that succeeds is immune to supreme legal authority for 24 hours. Wow. All right. This is also, if you wanted to radio for help, now would be a good time as soon as... Oh, wait, who got scattered by the wave? Who failed their con, their, their athletic save? Oh, oh, well, should I make it with this new power? Or this is, is it... kind of all resolved simultaneously. Like, you get okay. scattered by the and... wave, and when you come to wherever you happen to be, you'll be prone if you mm-hmm. failed that save. I failed that save. So you are prone, but when you come uh... to, you look, you and Valencia appear like this to your idea. This is what you see. I don't know if this is real, but this is all how you perceive I flex what has pecs. happened to you. Mm. Who that, else like, failed? You? Dance? So yep. you're yeah, prone the as nipple, well. The, the <clears throat> you're tossed dance. by the waves. <laughs> I know you're a sphinx, but this is the second time you've been a cat boy. It might be my calling. Yeah. This, is, this is the only one yeah. I gave input for. <laughs> Yeah. No, um, but why would I give you such ridiculous powers, many of which complement one another? Um, well, where is it? Do 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 do. Something is going to rise out of the tidal wave and emerge as uh, as you gather yourselves and as the water recedes, sort of leaving everything covered in slime and ichor and a bile spewer nephilim rises from underneath the overbog. Oh, dope. All of the evil and malevolent intent that has radiated out from it from thousands of years restrained by the power of Ravnica's hidden ley line, the one that goes through the sixth district, the one that no one ever found because it was busy holding this back and which was weakened after the Phyrexian attack, tore holes through the plain as Ravnica tra- transferred its energy to heal its wound, allowing the Nephilim to rise up and begin whispering to people, asking to have it freed. Uh, everybody roll some initiative. Which Nephilim is this? This is, this is, uh, this is the Bile Spewer Nephilim. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Four. 24. Or, sorry, six. Excuse me. 23. All right. Seven. The Nephilim has a lot of abilities. (laughs) 
Uh, and uh, you notice that it appears to be covered in a mucusy slime that let it uh, that lets it live mm. underwater Don't in the it. icker of its choosing. Oh. So uh, all right, uh, Nog, you are prone. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I think both of our people who are so when you're prone, I think you can spend a turn getting up and getting ready. Well, I take my main action. Yeah, yeah. which is yeah. to get up. Can I, as a bonus action, call for backup? Yes, yeah. you can do that. <laughs> uh, so I, I reboot. All right, hold on. I got to put away my. Uh, I got to bring up. Beep, come beep. in, come in, agency. Yeah, Nog, what's up? Hey, um, so, uh, turns out. Uh, there's some sort of eldritch being living underneath the district that, um, is here now. Um, what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so could you send all the ambulances? I'll let everybody know, but Nog, do you need help? Yeah, big time. Okay, Nog, I'll put out the word. I'll be right, I'll be there as quick as I can. Also, I am so jacked right now. Huh? Like... Can you see me? No. Oh. It's a voice. It's a voice chat. Oh, right. Well, believe me when I say I'm yoked. Cool. Uh, I will try to be there as soon as possible, but I am in the tenth district right now. Curry. Okay. Bye. Boom. That'll come. That'll become relevant later. Uh, Avenir, it's your turn. Uh, I will use my action to become unprone. Okay. And then, as a rogue, I have cunning action, which allows me to dash. Which I will use to take to the sky. (laughs) You're in the sky. You can fly. Yep. That's very exciting and new. Uh, But because, 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 but it feels so right to have aspect of Azor to finally be the sphinx that you have been studying for so long Mm -hmm. that you are not disoriented by flying. It is natural and you are, have all of the agility that you normally would and you don't get like weirded out by it. There's no penalties to it. I am fluent in Sphinglish. All right. Uh, But now... This horrible thing gets to go. Oh, uh, and, ooh, ooh okay. Uh, so, let's see. The Nephilim is going to use probing telepathy. And it is going to reach out to one of you. And it is going to make you an offer. Yep. Goodbye. Nog, it's going to reach out to you. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, and uh, could you make a wisdom save, please? Yep. Uh, not great. Uh, nine. Nine. You are going to fail, and the, you are going to hear the voice of the Nephilim in your head. And this might give you some context to what's been going on with Bruna. And it's going to say, Nog. Hi, hello? What do you desire? Um, like, out of anything? Anything. You have to tell it Nog's greatest desires. Uh, t- I have to tell it yeah. not every everything that I want. You, you have to tell it what Nog's greatest desires are, because you failed the wisdom save. I have always wanted to be a star on a reality program. You will be the greatest star. Really? Help me. Free me. Turn against your friends. Wait, are you not free right now? Well, it's just struggling out of the bog. Oh. So. It needs a hand or something. Yeah, what do you, I mean, you've got like six of them. What? Turn against your friends. Ally yourself with me. Well, I mean, that's a compelling offer. All right, so now. Do, I've, I've told it, do I, so uh, DM, do I do that? Uh, you're going, it's going to attempt to, It's it, it read your desires, so mm-hmm. it knows that you want to be a reality TV star, and now it's going to attempt to use Enslave on you. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, I might, dem- I might Ravnica smite one of you. <laughs> uh, the, well, I gave you all of these powers for a reason. The Nephilim targets one creature it can see within 30 feet of it. It must succeed on a DC 14 wisdom saving throw or yeah. be magically charmed okay. until the, uh, by the Nephilim until the Nephilim dies or, it in, or, or until it takes damage. Uh, when you take damage, you can repeat the saving throw. Is this uh, a spell? This is... Uh, it just says... You know what? I haven't looked... It's probably a domain ability. I think it is a domain ability. I will look okay. it up. I don't know yeah, if this, this, is, this, this is, isn't a this spell. Is relevant, this is, actually. This yeah, is just cause... something that, that a film gets to do. So I, yes, I yeah. am enslaved, or is it? It's going to try to enslave you. You have to make a DC 14 wisdom save. Otherwise, it enslaves you, and it controls your next turn. Okay. 
Uh, I mean, 18. 18. Okay. You feel the Nephilim's claws scrape against your mind, and you feel it. You, you know, it would make you a star. You would be the greatest star in the world. But what do you tell yourself to resist? And so I cry sometimes <laughs> when I'm lying in bed just to get it all up, get out of my head. I feel a little, a little peculiar and you know so on and so forth <laughs> all right well uh, so i say get out get out i say hey get the hell out of my head all right the nephilim's enslave attempt <laughs> fails on you uh so it's just going to use one of its legendary actions and it's going to take a swipe at you with one of its uh one of its uh that's fair it would its um tentacles it's got six and they can all be killed individually team which is probably <laughs> wink, wink, why you want to have those hint, six hint. bolts targeting different <laughs> yeah, things yeah. all right uh so i just got to roll my attack on you that's where we find out though they they operate under hydro rules <laughs> <laughs> all right well that was a nat 20. Oh. oh well nice knowing you well i mean he's got all these temporary, these temporary hit, points. hit points are for and help is on the way i have 66 hit points you get oh, jesus yeah oh wait i just take that it's just max damage because i rolled a nat 20. Oh. it's double damage isn't double it? damage it's been a while since uh, it doubles the random component okay. of the damage so you roll all the dice <gasps> twice I rolled my, I have two, it's 2d6 plus 5. I just rolled my d6. I rolled a 1 both times. So it's, so you take 9 damage from this. This is the wimpiest nat 20 ever. Yeah. I mean, it still sends you flying, but geez. I think the idea with crits is um, you get to do the fun thing more often, which is chuck more dice. Mm -hmm. Love dice. All right. Well, that's the Nephilim's turn. So as as you can see, it gets a lot of actions per turn. Um, Boss, baby. Yeah, Enor, it's your turn. You are invulnerable, so it can't hurt you at all. So sure you can is. just... You hearthstone and go you, back to you're, Stormwind. You're, <laughs> your squishy caster is no longer squishy. How useful. Yeah, right. f- fantastic. You know what? We're going to use the final uh, mind spike at level two that we have left. Oh, right. We haven't rested. Nope. Yeah. Mm. No, we didn't. I After re- what? Yeah. After the Swamp Ball game. Oh, where you... I use detect, uh, did, did to locate object twice. Mm-hmm. Right. That's Oops. all right. You got this, man. Yeah, you've got <laughs> other power. I, I, I could have killed the man in, in, underneath the water, but I wasn't able to. So now <laughs> I have to kill him. Would have been a foul. <laughs> that would have <laughs> just been murder. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Who... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I do, are, you, are you saying you want to give us a, uh, a, 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 a a restful action in the middle of that concert that it rejuvenated our yeah, spiritual Yeah, I'm going to say that you, had that, uh, that you found the concert I'm so delightful. I'm not going to say no to free spell no, slots no, you is can what have I'm a saying free, here. You can have those two spell slots back. Okay. We're still going to do it, uh, though, at the third level. Uh, so, mind yeah. spike-wise, you are going to take a... Uh, sorry, you're going to take a uh, wisdom save against 16. 16? Oh, yeah. I have pretty good wisdom. Uh, 19. Then you, you you succeed in that. Okay, so half that's half damage? Oh, yeah, that's half damage. Now, which are you targeting a tentacle or the head? Because head. there's seven different spots. Okay, I, the head? Yep. All right, roll me some damage on the head. All right, so that's going to be half of this 3d8. That's eight. Two, that's ten. And one, eleven. So that's going to be five. All right, well, you mind spike it. Nothing much seems to happen. It's five damage is not nothing. It's got a lot of hit points. Uh, hey, Slock. Mm-hmm. It's your turn. Dr. Slock Hatton. Uh, I'm going to hit the big button. You're going to hit the big button? <laughs> that gonna... seems fair. Yeah, the yeah. Slock Hatton project. Leyline's vengeance. <laughs> just kind of... All right. Describe how you tap into the power of the Leyline of Ravnica. I'm alone. I can hear things around me. I can feel them around me. But I'm still thinking about that first RGD draft. <laughs> I'm thinking about my signets. I turn my wrist and a cloud forms. I can feel the cool air on my genitals. <laughs> I clench a fist. That's my favorite. The cloud line. expands. <laughs> <laughs> my butt needs an itch. But I can't. Because my other hand comes up. <laughs> And drag kind of forms like almost like a, a claw and pulls down. And as I'm pulling down, thunder booms, the winds pick up, uh, and then that's when the 
the uh, lightning strikes. The lightning strikes. All right. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So each creature under the cloud, which is going to be everyone, is going to have to make a constitution saving throw. Even me, who dashed to the sky? <laughs> You're under the cloud. It said under 5,000 feet. Yeah. Oh, I still have to make the saving throw, but I'm not taking any damage. 18. 18. 19. Oh, 19. 20 on the Let's die. Let's go, everybody. Did everybody pass? Yeah. yeah. I hope so. 19. So did I. Oh. Aww. All right. Nice spell, idiot. No, it keeps going. It keeps going. Uh, I snap my fingers and Nog's rent goes down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Let's see. So Finding what happens on a failed save? Now, pretty confused. Everybody, everybody makes it. Everybody save. Nobody is deafened. Nobody takes two d six thunder damage. It's probably for the best that nobody took two d six. At least none of you guys uh, took two d six thunder damage. You get the really good stuff next turn. Uh, so that's the top of the round. Avenir, you're in the sky. You've just dodged a huge thundercloud. How uh, are you feeling? What are you doing? I am going to maintain a distance of 90 feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, using my move and then uh, my fly speed of 60 feet. This is very exciting. I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to prevent it from... I'm going to use my supreme legal authority. Uh, the 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 oh no, something is happening at nerve music starts playing. <laughs> um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, and I am going to file an injunction to prevent it from attacking. <laughs> So which do you want to target, the head or the tentacles? Uh, actually, I'm going to target the head and prevent it from using spells. Good plan. I was going to say, yeah. I don't want to get there enslaved. Yeah, okay. it's a DC 23 int save, please. All right, that's pretty that's, darn high. That's a tough one. While you're doing is is the artwork correct in that there are one, two, three, six. four, five, six? There are six tentacles. Okay, thank you. Uh... I make my save. Wow. I rolled a nat 20. Wow. And now it's immune to the yep, 24, for, for 24 hours. hours. The head is immune for the 24 head, the hours. The head is immune for 24 hours. Okay. But you could hold the, you could hold the tentacles still. Uh -oh. That's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> it, describe how it shakes off your control magic. Um, <laughs> you get in it said, fuck the police. It goes, <laughs> I'm a sovereign citizen. <laughs> Actually, wait. I think I have something to say to you. I think you can hear the Nephilim say, and it says, puny sphinx, I was here long before the magic of Azor, and I shall be here long after it has crumbled to dust, and all Ravnican civilization lies in ruins. Hey, that's a lot of civilization. Yeah. You have no power here, <laughs> Avenir, this griffin. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, Nog, it's your turn. Uh, all right. Well, I'm up. I'm on. I'm. I'm on my my battle cat dog. Uh, and I'm. I'm gonna charge for. Uh, should I go? Should we? I guess we're supposed to start chopping these tentacles, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that yeah. seems to be so the. The thing is, is so Ravnica Smite is my next melee attack. Will do this. Um, and it'll do two d six psychic damage and make it. It has to also do this wisdom saving throw. Do I want to? Do we want me to use that all on one tentacle, or do we want me to hit the base of the like the the skull? Because it um, also, if it fails its wisdom throw, it uh, has disadvantage on uh, attack rolls and ability checks. And it, oh, and it can't take reactions. Oh, because wisdom is ability, isn't it? Yeah. That, yes, do that. Should Absolutely, hit, hit do the, that. Hit the face. Yeah. Yeah. Hit the, the face. The face is where the hit points are. Yes, the face is... I would say that is accurate, that the face is where the hit points are specced. All right. Ha! I, I, I Nog charges on his mighty battle dog. And, okay. Uh, I, I leap out and try and stab it. Okay, with... make me an attack roll. Bokeh. Um, does a 18... Would an 18 hit? Yes, an 18 oh, okay. hits. Oh, good. So we're rolling some damage, uh, which in the, so, oh, wait, hold on. So the next, oh, so it's my regular damage, but then it says as a bonus, uh, as a bonus action, this would be my next melee attack. So do I do a regular attack and this? 
I mean, it's you the following boon. Catch, she casts a bonus action, lasts for one minute until you're next time you hit a through. So basically, what this is, is I think we've gotten a little mix up here. What this is, is you can cast this as a boon. And then for the next minute, any attacks that you do will do this. Right? It'd be the next time you yeah, hit. Yeah, the next yeah. time you hit, in the next minute. Right, okay. So I cast it on myself, and then I hit this And thing. then you hit this thing. And right. you deal. So an uh, extra do okay. Uh, so you deal an, so you deal your normal attack and you deal four d six psychic damage. Okay, so that is uh, twelve plus uh, five, so seventeen, so eighteen, uh, twenty two, uh, twenty six. Nice. I do right. twenty six damage. To All right, it. and it has a bunch of problems now. It can't. Uh, it can't. It has disadvantage on attack rolls well, and ability checks. The, it needs to do a wisdom save. Oh right, throw. yes. I wrote this. Why don't I know what this? Hey, it's a four. I definitely fail. Let's go. Mm. Let's right. go. All right. I so dummy let's... this uh, nephilim. All right. So let's go over your disadvantages here, then. Right. So uh, attack rolls, ability checks, and it can't take reactions nice. until the end of its next turn, uh, oh, right. which is actually coming up next. But it's got a, it's got disadvantage, uh, and it can't. Sorry. So it's got disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks, and it can't take reactions until the end of its next turn. Great. It's very upset. It is going to try to cast Wave of Bile uh, on you, which is the Kathleen Homebrew spell. Uh, you conjure oh, up a cool. wave of water. Well, it's kind of it's vague. Yes, yeah, it's trying to cast a spell. Yeah. Great. Okay. What do you want to do, Enor? I learned two things in prison: how to make friends. By making them out of tinier things, and how to say no, counter spell. Oh! It tries to conjure up another big wave of bile, which is what it cast on you guys at the beginning as it was coming out. But the spell fizzles, and it's very upset. Uh, Enor all wiggly, be like, no. <laughs> Enor, yeah. Do you want to describe how you're just like? <laughs> Enor just looks at the what, what's about to happen, or Enor sees into the future slightly about what's going to happen, Ooh. and just suddenly places his hand across the plane and smooths out the bile as it's beginning to roil. Wow! And just and says what he said. I learned two things in prison: how to make friends and how to say no. Great. So the Nephilim is going to not get to spell for the turn, but it will get one of its legendary actions. Uh, and it's going to try to take a tail swipe at you, Enor, but it's going to roll with disadvantage because that's, or not a tail swipe, oh. a uh, tentacle swipe. I would encourage them to do so. Uh, well, it, it, I rolled twice and I passed on both rolls because I got like a 25 on them. Wow. But that's are you great. impervious to damage? Yeah. I take no damage. <laughs> <laughs> it's so mad. <laughs> Working as intended. All right. Hey, Enor, it's now your turn oh, again. Well, I mean, we're going to do that mind spike thing again, because that's what we do. That's what we have abilities for uh, on the head. Uh, so wisdom save against 16, please. Mm, I pass, so I'm going to take half damage. Okay, so that's going I'm to be... I'm rolling hot tonight, baby. 3d8. 1. 7. And 14, so that'll be seven total damage. Okay. Uh, I, the head is starting to look a little bit damaged, but not particularly. Not much is... I mean, basically, this is a real slugfest going on. Uh, hey, Slock, it's your turn. Still channeling the Slay Lines Vengeance. Okay, what do you want to... So this is this is the turn where you get all of your... Um, Six bolts of lightning from the clouds striking uh, creatures or objects of my choice, but does any given... Creature object can't be struck by more than one bolt. But it does have six tentacles. Oh, well, I guess I'm going to have each of the bolts target each of the tentacles. That sounds hey. fabulous. All right. Six tentacles. Wow. So I'm going to so, go straight for the dome. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try. That's unironically what I was thinking until I got to that. Right, I got to make so. a dexterity saving throw. You and gotta I got to make, 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 make it six times. So just give me a second to roll yeah. some dice here. And Do then your mom grew you to have six tentacles. Okay. Tentacle one is going to fail. Tentacle two is going to fail. Tentacle three is going to pass. Oh. Tentacle four. What am I saving against? What's your uh, spell casting DC? It's dex. Oh. Uh, the DC is... And it should be wis linked to wisdom, which is maybe why you got a huge boost of wisdom. Because it's a druid Is spell. it just 
uh, 16, 16 is my base wisdom. Uh, okay, so Tentacle 4 is going to pass then. It's probably 17, because usually spellcasting DC is 12 plus your wisdom modifier, right? Right, which is why Dep he's... It depends on the class. But... So, And uh, the wisdom modifier should be bananas now, because you've got five to, a plus 5 to your wisdom. I have, well, plus 5 base wisdom. And I currently yeah. have plus... <laughs> okay, so, but, so, so you would have... 16 wisdom, which will give you a plus three modifier. Right. Oh. So it would be 15. 15. 15. Okay. Uh, one sec. What's my dex bonus? 16 plus three? Uh, oh, five, okay. I fail. Yeah. Great. And six, I fail. So I fail on four of them and pass on two. How much damage do those four tentacles take? Uh, they're 10d6 damage to all the ones that failed. Oh. I contribute my, yep. my dice to the... I need my one axe. from everybody. <laughs> this is a team effort. And then half as much on the successful one. Can I borrow a red D6? Yeah, sure. Great. Yeah. There we go. We got there we go. The, the royal so sampler. I'm gonna roll the ones that succeeded and then the ones that failed. Does that work? Well, it, or do you want me to go just one roll by one? one and no, just roll one big one, and then we'll say everybody that failed takes that much damage, and everybody or everybody who passed takes half of that damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm not going to roll these uh, six times? Yeah. No. Uh, it was 10 six, D6, nine. It? 10 D6. Oh my god, it's 10. So you need to... Do you need more D6s? I'm going to need four more. But Behind you. Re... <laughs> Just take the ones right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's much better. Yeah. yeah, the original one was a little rough. 12, 15, uh, plus... Five, or sorry, 12, 15, 27, 31, or 32, 34. Divided in half would be 17. 17. So some of these tentacles don't look so injured, but some of them look very injured is how, is how I would describe this. Uh, so some of them are, would be ready to drop right off. Some of them are going to need a fair bit more attacking, but boy, did you ever do a lot of damage. Through the power of Ravnica. I'm helping. Feels Can good. Can I have my pink die back? Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, all right. So, uh, hey, Avenir, it's your turn. Uh, well, it's apparently completely disregarding my supreme legal authority. <laughs> um, so I... Kid on the playground until he kids not, not to No, do it. no, you can't do that. <laughs> this is my slide. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, well... Kaka! Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Not taking a sip. I, 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 I may note that you are a cat, Griffin. Oh, so, meow, meow, meow. But I mean, also for a bird. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. He's a sphinx. Yeah. I don't know. Do sphinges uh, have the peregrine falcon slash hand penetrating a Pringles can? Like form. I oh, think absolutely. we're about to find out. Yeah. I think, Tucked however, in. you wish to be a sphinx is how sphinxes are at this point. You're the expert here. Okay, I um, I'll just charge one of the the tentacles. Do you want to charge one of the injured tentacles or one of the uninjured tentacles? Uh, one of the injured ones. Okay, that sounds good. Um, and I guess I just have like fierce claws. <laughs> All right, yeah, make yeah, me yeah. an attack roll against some tentacles. Um, are we, I guess it would use strength. Um, yeah, it's your normal roll. Normal you're roll? Just a, you're just a sphinx oh, now. Okay. Um, it, then I'll do 20, hit, I, 25. That's a hit. Okay. Roll me some And damage. then if it's my regular, six. Six. All right. Uh, <laughs> one of these tentacles looks like it's about to drop off. Okay. Nog, it's your turn. It's my turn. Uh, can I... Can me and Valencia like divide and conquer? I see like two things that are like you know. Yeah, mines. absolutely. All right, I'll go after. I'll go after the one that uh, uh, Avenir just attacked, okay. and I'll send Valen and Valencia will hop over at onto another one of the damaged ones. Yeah, sure. We split. Go get him, girl. Uh, so I take a little slash at it with my mighty sword. Ooh, that's um, not great. That would be a third. That's not gonna hit it. Should I use my inspiration? I have I have it from uh, when we won at Swamp Ball. Oh yeah, you've you've been holding on to it. When are you gonna use it? 
If not, yeah, yeah, you know what? It's I mean, there. I would use it against the head if I was going to use it, but... <laughs> well, I rolled a two. Um, so, uh, yeah, I miss. You miss. All right, but what does Valencia do? Valencia comes on in. Rolls a four. Uh, I wrote, over the course of that, that was a three, a two, and a four. I'm getting out all <laughs> the bad rolls now. It's yeah, totally yeah, fine. during the boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, she also misses. Oh. It's, it's fighting around too much. I can't get these vines. The head was way easier to hit. They are terrible. Hey, it's my Nephilim's turn. All right. Uh, it is going to use probing telepathy, and it is going to reach out to Avenir now. And it's going to... So, Avenir, you have to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Eight? Yeah, that's a fail. Okay. What does Avenir des- desire most of all? Better world. Oh, okay. Great. Avenir is... Uh, it's going to reach inside your head and it's say, I know all that you've wanted to do is make a better world for everyone, Avenir. But don't you understand? The current system is broken. Men like Bruna are allowed to rise to power, and you can do nothing to stop him inside the law. But if we, together, were to crumble it all, we could be rebuild Ravnica anew. And it's going to try to control you. It's going to try to use Enslave on you. So now you have to make another Wisdom Throw. DC 14. Avenir, the Guild Pact. It makes 14. Compelling. You guys are so lucky. It makes compelling I mean, case. I can no longer be charmed or frightened. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, then well, you would have automatically passed. I keep that passed. in my back pocket. But <laughs> I gave just, you that you know, for a reason. I don't even need this shit. Yeah. I gave you that for a reason, so it couldn't do that to you. Yeah, because I um, thought that was really dangerous that somebody would be able to, that I could take over three of the party members. Yeah, no, it, mm-hmm. it, it's a good backstop because then I can use like my immunity to it to use supreme legal authority to like lock someone else down. But um, uh-huh. yeah, no, it's like the system isn't broken. It's functioning as... <laughs> As intended. Yeah, system's intent is what it does. <laughs> ah, do you have a podcast? <laughs> All right, it's going to try to take a tentacle attack. I'm now. Sh- I'm sure this. I'm sure liberal reforms. <laughs> uh, it's going to try to take inside the system. A tentacle can a- save Ravnica. Oh. While you're do while you're talking to it, it's not going to stop listening to you and try to attack uh, <laughs> Slock. Buy our mug <laughs> or digital download. <laughs> Azor Hand of Jackal. God, I just rolled a natural one, so I'm definitely going to miss. Uh, Nobody <laughs> wants to touch a, a podcaster. We've got, we've got like onlookers watching the fight, and we're like, miss, miss. And everyone's like, well, this is. <laughs> yeah, should, no, okay, later when we, we tell the story, yeah. we have to do the Gandalf and be like, <laughs> for three days I fought the ball <laughs> rock until I smote his ruin upon the mountainside. With, miss. With. Gandalf, miss. your turn. I ro- attack with Glamdring. Two. That is a miss. <laughs> well, everybody's having a bit of a of a whiff time, but I do get I do get a uh, I do get a legendary action. So now I'm just going to try to take another swipe at Slock with just one tentacle rather than the triple tentacle attack. Out, he's not wearing armor. <laughs> okay, hey Slock, is a twenty going to hit you? Uh, yeah. All right. I believe so. Uh, okay. Woohoo! I get to damage you. Uh, you take 11 damage. Okay. This doesn't phase me. You missed my... <laughs> through the through this process, by the way, uh, Slock has aged. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because time is yes, no longer... Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah Slock is, is now an adult, right? Slock oh, is, instead of, yes. Like, instead of the Dr. Manhattan, like, uh, hydrogen atom, do you have, like, the colorless mana symbol? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I don't know what featherweight drew. I'd have to zoom in and see. Enhance. I thought that might do something. Yeah, I thought Paul would like <laughs> no, 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 no. In, the, in the edit. In the edit, in the it's going to be great. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, you hear Jordan. that, Jordan? Thanks, Jordan. It's just going to zoom, in, gonna zoom yeah. in on Ian's face. Yeah, that's where we go. Uh, so that's my Nephilim's horrific turn where I get multiple actions. I'll choose but... a symbol I respect. <laughs> <laughs> hey speaking of not respecting this monster you can't be harmed by it enor what's your turn well i mean we we have one trick and it's 
Mind spike. Okay, there cast some mind spike on it. Let's do some more mind spike uh, again. Once again, I would like you to do a spell save against uh, sixteen. And this is wisdom. Yes. I fail. Oh, thank goodness. Yes. Damage. So, max are you, are you, damage. Are you hitting oh, the head? Right. Yes. Good and idea. this is 3d8 at the total damage. Uh, where's my d8? There you go. 8, 12, wow. 14. That's 3. The 14. Hey, that's not bad. All right, the head is... Thanks. ...not looking particularly damaged, to be completely frank with you guys. <laughs> Got a lot of health. It's uh, yep. it's the big bad boss of the thing. Mm -hmm, uh, yeah. All right. Um, hey, Avenir, it's your turn again. Or no, it's not. It's Slock's turn. I'm sorry. Uh, welcome to round three. What you happens now? You have 50 now? minutes. You may begin. Hailstones rain down from the cloud. Each creature under the cloud takes 2d6 uh, bludgeoning damage. I'm thankful that the tentacle missed my dick and balls. <laughs> All right, so roll so some. Everybody takes Everybody this is just going to take 2d6 bludgeoning damage. Sure am. Seven. Wow, that was actually a really good saving throw. Uh, and eight damage for me. How much to damage? each of the tentacles. To each of, each of the tentacles. And the head. Okay. All right, hold up. Okay, so I've got to do some math. God, one of these tentacles is literally just hanging on by a thread. I you. took nine damage from that hail. <laughs> Why? I know. We've got to roll better. <laughs> One of those tentacles is like practically falling I'm not wearing any clothes. Off. It was extra chilly. Uh, I just, yeah, took one directly in the eye. Yeah. I, I will say that, like, yeah, for, from this, 75% of us are nearly naked. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't pick this art. <laughs> <laughs> it's just great. It's just funny how it worked out. Oh. All right. Hey, Slock, that's great. Avenir, it's your turn. Um... I am going to use insightful fighting. Okay. Uh, to gain sneak attack for one minute, if my insight roll beats your deception roll. Okay. Ooh, I, I, hmm. oh, I don't have a bonus to deception. So it's just straight cha bonus. Okay. Cha bonus. Cha bonus. Twenty-two. I'm going to use my inspiration. I see through the nonsense to its timid beating heart. Mm. Oh, Whoa, that was cool. Yeah. yeah. It like wow. skipped over the, the thing into the little other into thing. The, yeah. Into and the then the good thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so 25. All right. You or beat 24. it. You beat it on a roll. And now you have insightful fighting for the next minute. Okay. I am going to attack the tentacle. Okay. So there's one tentacle. It's like, basically, it's almost been chopped off. To be frank with you, it's got two hit points left. And a, several of them are looking quite injured. I would um, save that for Slock's area effect. Yeah, I've got yeah. a couple okay. more AoEs um, coming up. I'll attack one of the injured tentacles, not okay. the one that um, is probably going to die this turn. Okay. Um, so, plus seven. Oh! Twenty. Dungeons and dragons. <laughs> <laughs> now we're dungeoning. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's a crit. Okay. Oh, On a sneak attack. Oh. Road, road I wish you were hitting the head. Yeah. yeah. Well, this this is definitely a dead tentacle. It drops off. I hope so. It drops off. Yeah. There's okay. no way. <laughs> Scooping before I can even count 29. damage. Yeah. Thank you. You're down to five tentacles. Just viewers, just imagine one of those has dropped off. Uh, okay. Nog, it's your turn. I will. Uh, so I think it lets you do lots of damage to lots of things. I don't really have like an AOE. Hmm. No, I have. I I do big single target damage. So maybe I'm supposed to be using this on the head and yeah, like let the yeah. AOE kids AOE. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize I I can just keep casting this yes. Ravnica Smite. Yes. So I cast this Ravnica Smite on myself and uh, big chop the face. Okay, try to make me a big chop the face roll. I am big chop in the face. Uh, twenty one. That's a hit. By the power of Parhelion 2, <laughs> 3, 4, and 7. Well, uh, that is a 5. <laughs> That's two oh, ones in a oh row. 6. <laughs> okay, 12. Uh, 15. 18. 18. 18 damage. That is fabulous. Hey, you're starting to really make a dent on that head now. That was a great hit. It'd be better if I stopped hitting this with a rapier. <laughs> All right, it's my Nephilim's turn. 
turn. All right, I'm going to try to cast. I'm going to try to cast wave. Oh, wait. You got to make a wisdom. Oh, save. I do. Yes. I know what I did. Uh, what am I saving against? It's probably a pass. I've got an 18. I don't. There. I don't know what the DC would be on this. Basically, there's a lot of things that say you have to take a wisdom saving throw. Uh, so I'm going to set it at 15 because I'm the DM and sure. I can. And that's I passed. Fair. DM, you do that. I think that's very reasonable, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty high. 15 is a good number mm -hmm. for this. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess. And then Valencia is going to attack one of the... the uh, Have her attack the Wibbly Tentacle. The Wibbly Tentacle. Uh, she has a 15. That doesn't hit. Dang. These AC is super high. Mm -hmm. Oh, the tentacles have the same AC. The tentacles Ooh. have the same mm -hmm. AC. Because they move around a lot. Sure. I've already got enough stuff to track. All right. Hey, it's, oh, it's my turn. It's my turn. I'm so excited. Okay. Uh, it's time for Wave of Bile. This is a third level spell. I love that pixie song. The I wanted the stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm saving my... I've only got two counter spells, and I'm saving my next one for something big. Uh, well, this is a pretty big one. Uh, so basically how Wave of Bile works is I'm going to try to make a huge wave, and each area in that creature must make a dexterity saving throw. Oh. And uh, on a save, you take 4d8 bl bludgeoning damage, and you're knocked prone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just let this happen. Okay. Does this affect people that are in the air? Uh, it's Flying. a it's a it's a 10 foot high wide wave, so it wouldn't affect Avenir. It would just affect you two. It wouldn't even affect you because you're mm. just incorporeal right now. 10 feet in the air. Uh, 10 feet. It's 10. It's it's 30 feet long, 10 foot wide, 10 foot tall. So I'm going to cast a huge thing, and it's going to hit the two of you who are sort of more down here. Avenir's up in the air, so you have to make a deck saving throw. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh. My rolls are cursed today. <laughs> uh, 21. That's definitely a pass. Wait. What did you get, Nog? You have advantage on all strength. Damn. Uh, I got, well... I got a nine because of the four. You are going to take a whole lot of bludgeoning damage. You have lots of HP, so that's fine. Ah, yeah, I'm like a sponge. Yeah, yeah. you're a tank. <laughs> Tiny Ooh. tank. You're you're our tank. <laughs> you're our technical. Ooh. Yeah. I rolled three sevens and a six. Let's go. So that's twenty twenty seven. Twenty seven. Yeah, twenty yeah. seven. You take twenty seven bludgeoning damage and you're prone. Okay. Uh, so that brings me down to some amount of uh, HP. What's your HP at? 26. Oh, I'm only three HP points oh, underneath you. Oh, and I'm naked. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're also kind of naked. Yeah. By the, the power, power of Ravnica is granting you armor. Mm. Uh, I also have a bunch of extra things that I can do. I'm going to try and reach out and touch your mind, Slock. And I'm going to see, I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw and see if I can speak to you with my probing telepathy. Uh, 11. 11, oh. Oh, wait, no. Because my wisdom's yeah, it's up. It's a wisdom saving. 14. 14. Ah, oh, well, then I don't get to hear your truest thoughts because you made your save. I would probably tell you them anyways. I mean, do you want you just, what does Slock want most of all? Peace and quiet. And just like a, a hammock. A really nice Once hammock. Once we've wiped choice. civilization. Hammock, hammock and so many bushels of apples. <laughs> Once we've wiped civilization so. from Ravnica, my friend, <laughs> you will have the peace and quiet you so deserve. Do you, sorry, this is really rude, but I'm kind of just like vibing here. It's going to try and enslave you. So you can you make another wisdom saving throw? Oh, wait, so it did succeed in doing the thing? Oh, well, it talked to you. Oh, but it talked it, to me. How's it going? <laughs> 22. 22. <gasps> or sorry, no, even higher than that. 25. Uh, 25. Okay. I don't get a chance to... Nobody's been enslaved. Good grief. All well, right. We like get it at like me. that. Fine, I'll just take an extra swipe uh, at... Uh, actually, Nog is prone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I sure am. Tank, 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 tank. So does this mean I get advantage? Yeah, probably. Okay, well, it's a four, so I'm glad. Oh, that's, uh, does a 24 hit you, Nog? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. I'm going to make one swipe attack on you. Woo. Uh, take eight damage, please. Okie dokie. Swam. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> These edibles ain't shit. 
feel like I'm supposed to stop that next one that comes through now. The bottle. Yeah. <laughs> I was confident I could do. I gave plus five dex saves. Yeah, no, you were, you were you were doing good. I'm just rolling like uh, rolling like dirt. Uh, Enor, it's your turn. Sure is. Uh, you know what? Well, we can't. We we, we got to keep that counter spell in our back pocket. So we're gonna do a firebolt, two d ten, which is gonna be a uh, an attack, ranged attack against. You could kill one, that almost dead tentacle. Your face. Oh. Okay. The, uh, or sorry, let's yeah, let's go with one of the tentacles. The, yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. The really the one that's hanging on by a thread, or one of the more hearty looking. I think ones? one of the more hearty ones. Okay. Uh, so we're looking at uh, twenty. Two that's a hit. To hit, great, and that's going to be two d ten. Which one of these is the ten here? Whoop. That's not going to help. Five and eight damage. Eight damage. That's exactly enough to remove another tentacle. Fantastic. Four remain. All right, great. Uh, hey, Slock, it's your turn. Oh. Uh. Knock him out the box, Slock. Uh, I have a question. Am I able to? Be- so this this says concentrating on the spell. Yes. Um, does this mean that I can still take bonus actions? Yes. Okay. So for instance, round four, gusts and freezing rain assail the area. Yada. The, the very cool, and everybody takes one d six of cold damage. Mm-hmm. But. I have a bonus action, buddy, and I'm coming for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeez, takes, hey, that, I got nine. That, I take that, six. That takes out one of the <gasps> tentacles. Yeah. That takes out the real one, baby. I'm taking you're... like 40 damage. <laughs> you, you one turn. In one turn. <laughs> and for a bonus action, I'd oh. like to use healing word. Oh, what's um, the word? Uh, what's the word? What's the word? Slot. Use the healing word on Nog. The healing word of the day is sorry, dude. <laughs> uh, I heal Nog for four. Ooh, all better. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you six, <laughs> but I'm healing you for Thirteen. Four. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Hey, Avenir, it's your turn. Um, you I still take... have those gold. The, you still have those things you grabbed from the bog, right? Those little, like, simic healing charges. Oh, I do. I have two oh, of them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Everybody Just still have those. Yeah, but you also one. have help on the way. I'm sure she'll arrive any second now. Well, I did say send all the ambulances. <laughs> <laughs> that will be appropriate. <laughs> so, hey, Avenir, actually, before you take your turn, the storm is petering out, but I will say that it, now we're in rounds four to six. Gusts and feel it's freezing rain are assailing the area, and it becomes difficult terrain, and it's heavily obscured. So this may be resistant to you. Uh, they're, they're relevant to you because ranged weapon attacks are now possible, and the wind and rain count as a severe distraction for the purposes of maintaining constant, maintaining concentration on your spells and these gusts of wind are going back and forth so that may impact your ability to fly somewhat it does well, disperse fog mists and similar phenomena that's true all of the dust and it's and it's putting out most of the fire around you actually mm. and probably the spores mm-hmm. um well avenir's adept at nothing if not navigating difficult circumstances and awkward situations Although, you know, those are usually social and l- legal. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to try to attack another one of the tentacles. Okay. Nog spits, actually... spits out some teeth and says, I'm glad you're having this revelation now. <laughs> <laughs> the system's purpose is what it does. It's down to three tentacles. One which is quite damaged and two which are not quite so damaged. Um, I'll attack one of the ones that isn't quite so damaged. Okay. Kalima. Uh, 17. That's, that's the button. That's the number you're looking okay. for. Ooh. Um, it is a sneaky attack. Rogue damage. Oh, yeah. Um, 18. No, uh, 18, 25. Ooh. You take out a tentacle entirely out of there. Describe how you sever it. I, um, fly up to it. And then trace down the base and then just do the Garfield swipe, right? Like the <laughs> claws extend from my hands, rapier like, <laughs> according to my <laughs> character sheet. Yeah. There's a slight twinkle and then just, rawr. <laughs> just like saber, sabering a tentacle. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My ears go back. 
Four tentacles down, a bunch of damage marked on the head. You guys are doing great against this horrific Nephilim. Nog, it's your turn. You're very injured. <laughs> uh, DM as my main action, I get up. <laughs> you have gotten up. As a bonus action, I would like to, uh, Resident Evil style, take out one of these Simic sprays and spray myself down. Absolutely. Well, it's 2d8 plus your dexterity bonus. Well, so I just, free, free five. Uh, 12, uh, 15. Great. Oh, you're not so bad after all. Dad? Can we use these on, for our bonus actions on other people? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I go, ah, the way a goblin should smell. All right. Uh, Valencia wants to jump out at one of the that, damaged that ones. That sounds great. hi -ya. <laughs> <laughs> She misses. Go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, but I, I, I would as a as a free action. Can I just like in like insult the Nephilim to try and continue to be the tank? Yes. Okay, I do that. Uh, you can try to draw its attention and get it to try and um, come at you. I guess you smell worse than the weak old brownies that were left in the uh, in the factory. What's a brownie? <laughs> Oh, about 250. <laughs> <laughs> the product of 10,000 years of civilization. <laughs> Got him. Uh, Available on the layaway from Enor. <laughs> it is my turn as a Nephilim. I'm going to try to use probing telepathy to... Well, I mean, I haven't tried to probe Enor yet. So, Enor... Yeah, we should all probe Enor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Enor, can you make me a wisdom save? I sure can, actually. 17. I reach out, but I'm not able to hear Enor's greatest desires and tempt you. I am going to try to enslave you, though. So now make another DC 14 save. Against what? Or just straight it's, save? It's a straight DC 14 well, save. Well, cool. That's 10. Do you oh, have you inspiration? Like or? No, I don't Is have it? inspiration. Oh, dear. Oh, yes. Finally, yes. You know what? I mean, wait, wait, wait. Is this a spell? It is a spell. Cool. Well, no, it's a, it's an ability. It's just like uh, a okay. legend. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So I finally got one of you. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So here's how this works. The the Enor is charmed and until he if he takes damage, he can Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> go on. Go go <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can you can repeat your saving throw, but now you're mine, Enor. <laughs> I mean, that's no change from the rest of these episodes. So let's go. Yeah, All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to give people as much. I, anyhow, you're under the Nephilim's control. You can't take reactions, and, the, and I'm going to talk to you, and I'm going to say, "Come with me, my pet. Ready an action for me." Cool. Give me a good target. Just. And so Enor is going to sit like this, and you're going to see the ah, the light in his eyes kind of go dark and cloudy, and the and the Nephilim now has him. Uh, and uh, oh, Enor, it's your turn. I told you to hold a reaction, mm -hmm. uh, hold an action for me. Slock, it's your turn. What do you want to do? Uh, what? So you don't take any damage? No, he's completely incorporeal for the next ten minutes. Completely invulnerable. Oh. Yeah, oh. we've got I think four the more. The worst person to get enslaved. We've got, we, got enslaved. I think we've got six more turns before this spell wears right. off. The the gusts are still gusting. Okay, so everyone's gonna take a d six. A d six of frost of coldy damage. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be longer than that. Ah, uh, it's like one minute per. A, a turn in D and D is five seconds. Or six seconds. Six There's seconds. Ten six rounds seconds. In a minute. Ah, okay. Yeah. Then, ten, yeah, so much, ten, then much. Ten more minutes than is that. very long. Time. Then I don't need to keep track of this at all. <laughs> Uh, okay, the tentacles take some damage. Everybody else has taken their their frosty damage. Yeah. Oh, oh, who, who? What was the damage? Uh, one d six. Uh, and the head has taken its frosty damage. What do you? <laughs> what do you take? Uh, or what do you do next? I would like to use one of the simic healing packs on Nog. Okay. <laughs> Just bathe me. 
I'm getting the, I'm getting the teenage boy axe and treatment. That's two D. No one could tell. Two D. <laughs> as as you try to do that, I'm going to use Enor's ready to action to uh, to interrupt you. By uh, what spells do you have, Enor? Oh, I mean a whole bunch. Uh, you have my character sheet. Do you want to see it? Here you go. Yeah, I mean I ha- I took a picture of it. But... Enjoy. I have one at the fourth level uh, cantrips, and then the full first level. How many spell slots do you have left? It, I was just mentioning that. Yeah. So I have, I have one at the fourth oh, level right. left. Third level is expended. Second level is free. Cantrips are option. Can I fourth level mind spikes lock? Oh, <gasps> yeah. that's yeah. yeah, yeah that, that, that has to yeah. happen. I'm gonna uh, die. Wow, <laughs> that sucks for you. <laughs> You're gonna have to I make. Know, I know. Yeah, you, uh, you should make a spell save against sixteen. But it's a wisdom save, and you get really good bonuses to wisdom right now, don't you? Uh, I plus do. Three. I think plus six. Total. Yeah, plus six total. Give him those. Oh, oh that, that twenty. 20. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess I just expend that spell slot. We then, need to take half I? damage. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Half damage. I mean, uh, no. You're, you're... Wait. <laughs> oh, it's not. Uh, mi- okay. And that's going to be, uh, what is it? 4d8. Oh, that's still that's a lot. The fourth level. So two, six. That's a die 10, homie. Yeah, yeah that's what it should be. You said 4d8. 4d8. Did four... I say 4d8? I said 4d8, yes. Where's my 8? No, but well, we rolling. can keep that too. He was rolling <laughs> so low. <laughs> we can keep the 2, right? Yeah, that's all right. Uh, four, nine, oh, 16. Oh. <laughs> was that an eight? 24. So, so take 12. Take 12. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, I go to 14. Oh, that, that wasn't so bad at all. No, no good for everyone. <laughs> if, it, if he yeah. didn't save, it would have killed him. Yeah. Good for everyone. <laughs> That's what the Nephila wants. Yeah. It's trying to kill all of you as much as it can. So do I, I, I do I still heal Nog with this back? No, you've been interrupted. Oh, so I don't get a thing. Well, it's try it try it basically as soon as you tried to do anything, it uh it attacked you with Enor. So Okay. I don't know. He still gets his action. He's yeah. still if you're it. if you're genuinely asking, yeah. 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 So I still get an action. You still get your action. Yeah. But you get pummeled in that in the process. What's your health at, dude? Uh, <laughs> higher than yours, bro. Uh, I would like <laughs> to use yourself. that healing can on myself then. Um so I go to one of these healing cans. And sorry, what was the healing can again? It's 2d8 plus your dexterity bonus. Ooh. Uh, that is 12. Hey! Aren't these so useful? So glad I gave them I go to back you. back to 26. Let's go. You Nothing know. happened. Yeah, you negated that attack. Yeah. Everything works. All right. Hey, uh, Avenir, it's your turn. I will use supreme legal authority on Enor. Oh! Good call! To prevent him from casting spells. Enor, no, bad! (laughs) (laughs) Against the law. You went to jail already. You're in violation of your parole. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. All right, what's the save against this? Uh, It's an int save against DC 23. Ooh, okay. Int save. Don't violate your parole. I'm really sorry, because my int is really high. But it's not but high your, enough. But it's seven are... hundred die. Hey. All right. This is where the bad rolls reside. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> bad uh, rolls for friendship. Okay. You cannot take that action for the next um, one complete round of or one minute or one complete round of combat. Okay. Okay. So, mm-hmm. All right. So now Whatever Enor can't later. be used to cast spells for the next until the end of my next turn. I guess. All right. Well, I'll just have yeah. you hit something then. <laughs> what's your What's your weapon? Oh, it's not good. It's a quarter staff. Okay. 1d6 bludgeoning. Ah, I did something. All right. Uh, Nog. I hit the boss after casting this. I keep smiting. Hiya. Okay. All right. All right. We in this? Uh, it's a, yeah. I mean, it's 17, right? 17 is cool. the number it's you're It's like 20-something. Okay. So. You're good to go. Okay. Here it is. The big damage. <laughs> Man, this game rules. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so five. Uh, all right, uh, nine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> Just Second seventeen or seventeen. Twenty. Uh, twenty. Twenty damage on the head. On the head. Okay. 
you know what? You're starting to maybe chip away a little bit at this head. <laughs> Die, you stupid Nephilim! I mean, you guys are doing good work. Uh, you know, I, uh, and we're then using our skills. We'll, we'll go after one. Or, There's so, one, one very injured tentacle and one tentacle that looks quite healthy. Sure, I'll just take out the injured one with Valencia uh, with an 18. That's a hit. Uh, and she do... Uh, eight damage. That takes it out. It has literally one tentacle left, uh, and you've put some damage on the head. How is everybody feeling resource-wise? You feeling good or bad? Uh, I'm doing okay. You yeah, I feel all right. Um, you have to make a wisdom saving throw against my big smite, though. Oh, yes. My massive smite. Uh, I definitely fail that. Sick. So now I have disadvantage on my next attack. Yeah. yeah. And I continue to yell insults at the thing. Excellent. Okay. Uh, fantastic. But it's my turn. The Nephilim. I'm so angry. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to try to cast. Uh, what's a good one? I'm going to cast Wave of Bile again. So that's thirty feet long, ten feet time. wide, ten feet tall. Everybody has to make a deck saving throw. I'm just imagining it's like you know in a wave pool when they're about to start the big waves and you yeah. hear like a horn go off and I'm just like, no, not again. Yeah, just get up. <laughs> we we have deck saving throw? Yep. Oh no. Avenir two? Uh Avenir would be in the sky, so as yeah. long as you can stay at thirty feet out of the way. Thirteen? That's a fail. Uh Less than 13. All right. Cool. <laughs> I can't. I'm a little goblin. I can't swim. I'm floating. I should be out of range here. I'm one with the Nephilim. You both take 17 bludgeoning damage oh. and are knocked prone. Oof. I got. I'm. Whew. How many hit points do you all have left? Nine. Nine. Forty. Six. Six. So things are looking pretty bad then. Yeah. Well, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> it's taken her almost forever to show up because she had to find somebody who could cast a very high level teleportation spell. And then they had to figure out how to cast a teleportation spell to the sixth district because no one's ever been there before. <laughs> <sighs> But Agency Dispatch is here, and she's going to come screaming over the edge of the precipice, and she's going to say, Nog, 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 I'm here, I'm here! <laughs> she's so cute! Holy moly! <laughs> yeah, I am dying. <laughs> All of this chatting is a free action. Hi. Hey, you look wonderful. Oh, Nog, it's so nice to meet you. It's... What's going on? Uh, well... Potential figment of my imagination. Um, apparently, there was an elder god residing underneath the sixth district, and that was beating the crap out of us. Oh my god! Okay, well, uh, I'm here, and you know what? It turns out I am a very high level cleric because I thought this might be needed. And she's going to cast a special spell called Agency Mass Heal, and she's going to target. Uh, all four of you, because oh, she just, or all five of you, but Valencia hasn't been hit. All the ambulances All of the ambulances are here. Are here. <laughs> I can target up to six creatures of your choice that I can see within range. I choose not to target the Nephilim, uh, and I'm going to call out words of uh, restoration. I'm going to say, never fear! The agency is here! And then I'm going to roll a die, and you all regain 14 HP. Let's go. All right. right. And now Millie is in the fight. And she goes after the Nephilim. Go get him, Millie. Thank you, Mrs. Fairy person. He's a fixie. I appreciate oh, the shit. effort. Uh, Enor, it's your turn, I, and so I'm going to no. try and have you attack Nog, okay. who's laying prone. All right. Uh, Nog, what's your uh, AC? 16. Oh, cool. That does not hit. Hey, describe how you, what you do as you are forced to uh, attack your helpless friend there. Oh, my, I'm prone, right? Yeah, so you haven't had a chance so to get this, up yet. You get advantage. Though. Oh, cool. I guess. Hey. Nope, that's worse. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you know, I never actually used this thing to hit a person with. I went over to that like <coughs> Wham! Right next to your head. Oh, hey, it's still a mystery. <laughs> Let me try again. Okay. Wham! Oh, I mean, you're getting there. This thing sucks! Yeah, you should stick <laughs> to magic. Yeah. 
Also, stop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Slock, it's your turn. I'm prone. Yeah. So you lying can... naked on the floor. Uh, you're about to break. <laughs> so I guess I get up. Yes. I start hovering. Yes, again? you can start hovering again. Great. Tell me about the illusions. Um, now I had to Google what a bonus action can exactly be. <laughs> me too, buddy. It's fine. <laughs> So I can't cast, I mean, I could cast like a, the, the healing yeah. touch, but that's it. Like I, am I able to move Yes. after this? Can I move and then cast healing word? Yes. Great. I would like to hover above 30 feet. No. <laughs> and then the range of healing word is 60 feet. I would like to, I guess, use healing word on myself. Okay. What's the healing word? Uh, D4 plus three. <laughs> cool word. Wow. Oh, the word? Uh, Mazel tov. Six. Hey, you gained six HP. All right. 29. All right, you're doing good. Uh, and uh, But we also all have to take some burr attacks, don't we? Because oh, that's still yeah, happening. Sorry, this is the last round of this happening. This is the last round Everybody of it. Even some. Millie has to take a burr attack. Ooh, that was good for, well, for you, not for me. Hey, how many times can you cast that? Once. Mm. It's pretty powerful. All right, mm -hmm. the head is injured. The tentacle, there's one still, that tentacle is just holding on. For dear life, it's it's not taking a lot of damage. Uh, but Avenir, it's your turn. I well, attack it's quite the a head. Of, you attack the head? Okay, go for it. The head's starting to look a bit beat up. Let's go, buddy, let's go. All right. Dang. I used it already. <laughs> Does anybody have it? Uh, no. I do have like... I used it to fail earlier. Mm, me too. Same. I do have disadvantage on rolls and checks for this next turn. If that... Unfortunately, yeah, no, that doesn't... That that don't help a 13 none. Nope, you're just going to miss. Yep. Okay. My, my fierce sphingish claws clatter spark our... Like, like a cat at the kitchen door. <laughs> Or the bathroom door. Oh. Uh, Nog. Uh, question. Yes. What do the doofins do again? Oh, yeah. oh. Complete loss of appetite, a purple epidermal hint, heightened senses giving advantage when appropriate, a strangely altered voice, immunity to harmful inhalation effects, and anything that would cure disease either removes these effects or accelerates them. If you're the subject of healing magic, tell Kathleen. And then you do the sneeze. So it's not going to do much to this, unfortunately. Okay. There's a bunch of other magic mushrooms around. Uh, well, I got to get up <laughs> on my turn. Um, I just love knocking you prone. It's so disruptive to... <laughs> yeah. I get up. Uh, I swear profusely. And uh, that's all I can do. Okay. Uh, does Valencia... Yeah, she can uh, go after this last healthy tentacle. Nope. <laughs> it's my turn again all right i've got one tentacle left and i'm going to use it to attack nog because he seems to be doing the most damage to me and i think that's very fair mm -hmm. uh so i'm gonna roll an attack on you come on oh uh does a 12 hit you it does not whiff okay well yeah, that's what i thought well in that case i'm just going to use uh well don't you dare I'm knock out. me over again. I'm out of enslaves. Oh, but I do, but I can just take another tentacle swipe attack as you as a bonus action, because or a legendary action, so I will. Bring it on. Oh, does a 24 hit you? <laughs> How messed up would it be? I'm just built I brought it. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. brought it. Okay, great. I get, I, we're going to hit you with my one remaining tentacle. And I'm going to deal... Nine damage to you. Whap! <laughs> right. Back down to sing. Back down to single digits, baby. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, he's the sponge. Yep. I've been hitting yeah. him. No. But uh, I got healed for fourteen. Yeah, and yeah. then I took, and then I took more damage. Oh, I took, an, I took another wave, and then I took another <laughs> burr I attack. I was joking about myself. the tank earlier, no, okay. but no, this is what we've decided. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm doing it. I'm fulfilling my niece, Ranger Tank. 
Uh, well, that's okay because 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 uh, Millie is up next. It's her turn, and she is going to cast an aura of vitality. Uh, a healing energy is going to radiate radiate out from her, uh, for from her in an aura within a thirty foot radius until the spell ends. The aura moves with you, centered on you, and you can use a bonus action to cause one creature in the aura, including you, to regain two d six hit points. So she's going to move over to you and you're just going to immediately regain 2d6 hit points as long as you can stay with millie you will just regain 2d6 hit points thanks ambulance all right so you regain uh i gotta roll it duh uh you regain nine hit points oh. <laughs> back up double digits <laughs> take, take nine <laughs> go 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 back up nine it's like it never happened mm-hmm. all right uh enor it's your turn enor try to hit millie please I mean, this is about what you would expect from somebody trying to hit a pixie with a stick. <laughs> How does Millie like five uh, against her DC? She yeah, that does not hit her. She's quite high level. Oh no! All right. Well, that was your turn. <laughs> Boy, this is so miserable. Enslave is awful. Slock. Hello. That you know what? That you got one tentacle left, and the head is starting to actually. You've marked a lot of damage on the head. You've marked over 100 damage on the head. Yeah. How many hit points could I possibly have given Ex- it? That's what I'm talking about. Um, is so, the storm done? Yeah, yeah, the storm ends. The storm has ended. Um, how... Do, do Nephilim have digestive tracts? Like, will a psychedelic shroom have any effect on them? Probably not. So the zoom caps, even in a large qual quantity i wouldn't try to feed it a zoom cap okay because sometimes they can have beneficial events oh, yeah. oh yeah these have like a pretty big upside and like a marginal yeah. downside and it's like it's been marinating in them for like ten thousand years yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's true it's all zoomed up i feel yep. like i should take oh what s- happens to millie <laughs> uh i'm gonna take a mushroom before i take an action if that's all right. Yeah, you can, yeah, you, yeah. Eating eating random mushrooms you find is a bonus action. I would like to use a bonus action to eat the uh, Oiram Meganium. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. I've got the, I've got it up. Where is it? Okay. Oh, yes. It, uh, this is the Mario mushroom. It has the effect of enlarge on all creatures. You grow one class, you suddenly grow even larger, Slock. <laughs> uh, now you have advantage on strength checks, uh, checks and your weapons deal an extra 1d4 damage. Oh, well, at least I'm larger. Can you regurgitate it into my mouth? <laughs> Can I do that as a bonus action? <laughs> Can I wild shape into a bird and then do it? <laughs> you know what? I will let you. You can't wild shape into a bird and barf it into a, as a full bonus action, but you can definitely do that as your main Do you have another one? Don't you get, carry like three or four of those things? No, I, that was the only Mario mushroom I had. Um I kind of just want to cast Erupting Earth. Then do you it. should do it. I'm going to mm-hmm. cast Erupting Earth. But you've eaten the mushroom as a bonus action, so now you're a larger slog. I'm very large. Why did he get larger? Yells Millie. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, it's been a journey. Why do he get larger? Not why is he blue and nude? <laughs> well, we don't know what Millie is seeing because she didn't huff the same spores oh, that you did. Uh, uh, On a side note, you ever just go back and forth between being concussed and not, <laughs> and then back down again? You got the worst trips. Yeah. You have to make a deck saving throw, and okay. the creature takes oh, three d12 decks. bludgeoning damage. <gasps> that sounds great. You should target the head. I'm targeting the head. Uh, 15. I realize with this information, I don't know whether or not this hits. Um, So... Uh, your uh, uh, casting ability is Wiz. Mm-hmm. So with the bonus to it, your save DC should be 18. 18. Or no, no, sorry. It would be 12 plus modifier, uh, so 15. All right. I get a 15, so I pass my save. Oh. Okay. So do I take half damage? How, how's this, how does heaving earth... Or ro- uh, you take air? yeah you uh oh you take three d twelve on a failed save oh that's pretty good uh, yeah yes so oh, oh wait sorry three d twelve on a failed save half as much on a successful one so you did successfully save so to mm-hmm. roll three d twelve and I'll take half the damage yeah uh, that's great nine eleven no oh. uh seventeen seventeen so I will Eight. I, 
I will take eight. All right, things are looking good. You're making progress. Avenir, it's your turn. I attack the head. Yeah. <laughs> You're making progress. <laughs> Ten years later. Uh, 22. Ooh, that's a hit. Roll me some damage. Okay, come on. Poke it hard. Eight. Come on, rogue come on. damage. Rogue damage. Rogue damage, rogue Sneak damage. attack. Oh! oh. Those uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, uh, 17 plus eight is 25 plus... Um, 29. Describe how you absolutely, oh, you don't, oh, it, you have hit this thing very hard. It Sphinx is fall. very close to going down. Describe how this happens while I do some math to add all of this up. I, um, after having skidded harmlessly off its armored forehead last turn, I find myself behind it. The natural habitat of the rogue. <laughs> Realizing... I can just like hover in place. I extend a claw directly into the back of the head, near where it would meet the spine on a humanoid. I name Wave of Bile oh. <laughs> and push. Excellent. So you deal. It's, it's what pithing, pithing means. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Great. Uh, it takes an absolute bust ton of damage from that and seems disoriented, we'll say. Uh, Nog, it's your turn. I boon myself with Ravnica Smite. And I say, I run up to it, jumping off the ground after being prone, launch into the air and say, this is for the factory. This is for the kids. This is for uh, honestly ruining uh, Ogavan's date night. Uh... And uh, for all the sausage in Ravnica, ha! Uh, that would be like a 20-whatever. That's a hit. Come on. Come on, Ben. Seven. Mm -hmm. uh, so plus uh, four. So 11, 15, <gasps> 16. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, 20. Come on, come on, come on. 24. Oh, okay. Let me do some math. This is all very exciting. And then in comes Valencia with the punch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. D roll me some extra damage. I'm just really slow at doing math. <laughs> Valencia goes, ra 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 Rag, 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 that is 18. That's a hit. Dog, dog, dog damage. <laughs> Six. Dog damage. Describe how Valencia lunges at the head. Uh... Through all of her uh, training in the swamp ball earlier today, she knows how to throw a tackle. Uh, so pretending that the air is a murky swamp, she th launches her entire body and gives it like a, like a you know, a Mark Messier, <laughs> perfectly, perfectly uh, targeted shoulder uh, straight to the, the nose region. Ooh. Ooh. She impacts and lets out kind of a yelp because she hits it so hard. But the Nephilim also starts to scream and the stone begins to crumble and you can hear it all rattling in your heads. No, 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 I wanted to do. And a huge... Tail, tidal wave of black ichor pours out of its <laughs> mouth <again>! and <laughs> eyes and it all goes black. Dog lethal. Nice. You come to in a medical tent. Woo! <laughs> you have resumed your previous forms if you ever changed your forms. You slowly become aware that somebody is applying bandages to burns and scrapes, and there's a simic doctor who's hovering over you, just jamming you full of healing. <laughs> Ooh, I make an attack at them just because I'm confused at this point. <laughs> this one, 16. 
Yeah, it's a 16 on them, actually. <laughs> you bop them on the head, and then they grab your staff, and they go, whoa! Right. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the, fr- the only melee that you do is against, <laughs> the, is against the doctor. They still do take two damage. <laughs> <laughs> they put a Band-Aid on their own head. Good. May they take your staff away. Uh, no! But you're alive. <laughs> and you're all in a medical tent somewhere. What do you want to do? Like existentially or just like in the moment? Hey, uh, do we just like uh, kill a god? Again? Again? <laughs> uh, I think a Nephilite is not quite a god. Technically, they're the children of God. How do you know that? Do we get a badge or something? Like, not uh, one of yours. Oh, we should get, like, a punch ticket. For I, the, th- the fourth god has to fall over for free. For a while there, I felt like I knew everything there was to know about Ravnica. Oh, you've, re- <laughs> you've, you've retained some of that. <laughs> retained what? Oh, I can't flex my boobies anymore. Uh, so do you guys want to get up and get out of the tent? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. is yeah. Valencia... Yeah, like, Valencia's with you. She's fine. She's She's been giving... Millie's giving her scritches. Oh. Oh, Millie's here. Yeah. Wait, let me bring her back. Where'd she go? Boop. Hey, uh, what happened? I don't know. Uh, you were the one who told... You were the You were the one who said you were being attacked by a god. When I got there, there is a horrible thing spewing ichor out of, out of it, and it almost beat the crap out of all of you guys. Are you... You've been out for, like, two hours. Well, that's better than normal. Mm. Actually, shorter than I thought. Yeah. First good sleep I've had in a while. Um, so, I guess, long story short, uh, the guy who we all thought done it, done it? In a roundabout way. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I mean... Uh, a Herobian accidentally OD'd on some abandoned edibles. <laughs> Uh, shut, up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. You'll incriminate us. <laughs> Does anybody want to make a perception check while this very, like, confused uh, conversation is happening? 23. 21. 14. Uh, 14? 21. Everybody realizes, now though, that you're sort of gathering your wits, you're in the construction site. It is completely blocked off. Uh, and it's been turned into what looks like a temporary command center, and there's probably every Boro soldier in the district here, and they're forming a perimeter and controlling stuff. The You can see in the distance the After Sausage Warehouse is mostly out, but there's a few f- visit fire trucks who are taking down any, like, spot flames, and half behind you, half of the bog is charred and black, and the thick brush has been reduced to ashes. All around you, Pure spring water bubbles from the ground. Do you want to cast detect magic again? Yes. Uh, the bog doesn't feel bad anymore. It's oh. very magical, but it's that different magic that you felt. But like it doesn't it. feel stretched and taut anymore. It just pulses and flows naturally. Humming as all is well you can see there's more medics and there's treating other people from the concert for smoke inhalation and burns. And uh, in the distance, everything seems to be fine. But before you can gather too many of your words about you, you hear a familiar tick, 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 tick of a cane and crawl feet. And Tizia comes up to you and says, Slock, Slock, my boy, my boy, what happened? I think I was a god, but then we defeated a child of god i felt all the ley lines with Our, bruna with bruna bruna was purple and angry and very dead now not a great guy to Slug. be honest tizia is gonna look at you and she's gonna pull you to the side and she's gonna say sorry quietly she's gonna say i'm sorry could you repeat that one more time slock did you say bruna is dead yeah, but like I want to be clear that I tech I did not kill him. I know that previously killing, you know, people is like but no, I not I didn't. But you are <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying this you guys got a history. I'm a I'm a kid still. 
<laughs> I got my whole life ahead of me. <laughs> so, Slock. How, what did Bruna try to do? Did, did he do this? Yeah. So you're telling me that Bruna went crazy, tried to burn down the bog and the aftersage party, and then a huge monster... Yeah. ...came out of the ground? Y well, yeah, yeah. So Bruna went mad... Tried to destroy everything. Yeah. He died. Yeah. In a way that may or may not involve you. Mm-hmm. And then you defeated a giant monster. We also saw a really good concert. Slock. But yeah. You have exceeded my wildest expectations. Shucks. <gasps> With Bruna dead, I will be in charge of the Chamber of Commerce until the next elections can be held. And we're in the middle of a Golgari recruitment drive. Wonderful. Wonderful, my boy. Happy I could <laughs> deliver. Can any of us hear this conversation? You could try to eavesdrop and hear this conversation. I do that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, uh, my ears are full of blood. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tizia, Tizia... Uh, leaves and, and, uh, and, or before she leaves, she says, Slock, we'll just cover up the went crazy bit, of course. But, my boy, perfection. Happy to help. And she walks away quickly with a spring in her step. On the flip side, it seems to be a very quickly rotating position. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, then, uh, then two more people are going to come up to you. I have a feeling I know. Is it? Oh, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is she still wearing a blonde wig? No. Oh, okay. No. Uh, but you can ask her if she's wearing a blonde wig. Hey, would, were you wearing a blonde wig earlier? No. Oh. No. I got tipped off because my younger uh, my younger sister was here. Oh. I, I that makes sense. That's how she got the line to you, what you guys were doing at the university. They've got uh, agents everywhere. We, Demir, are just so well connected. So what happened? And then Millie flies up beside her and says, oh, well, there's just like the like the head of the Chamber of Commerce went crazy, but it turns out it wasn't a murder after all. Yeah. Well. <sighs> Before a jury. We <laughs> had the opportunity to not send Zossel to, Zossel prison. to prison. <laughs> to super prison forever. <laughs> for, for accidentally leaving out weed brownies. And I think we should take that opportunity and blame it on the rich white man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> All right. So what happened? Uh, capitalism, man. <laughs> it, uh, I mean... Long story short, it seems like uh, Bruna uh, had been kind of Ogavan is the is the is the one that we that is his was his past friend, right? No, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Orbot. Orbot Zorna. Orbot Zorna. His previous apparently uh, uh, Bruna had uh, been still working, I guess, to meet the ends. Of, uh, of Zunak and um, tried to uh, uncover an, an ancient god underneath and he found one. Oh my god. Also, yeah. turns out there's a ley line underneath the sixth district. What? Uh, yeah. Uh, Avenir's media training takes over. Great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you field this one. Franca uh, is going to put her hand on the ground and she's going to be, oh my god. I'm pretty confident I still have a muncushion. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a seven on a deception roll. Mm. Um, Avenir crosses his arms before he lies. Um, <laughs> can't make eye contact. Um, well, you see, uh, it appears that Bruna, who was a contemporary of Obort Sunak and a friend of his, participated in several expeditions together in their time at university, um, was continuing his efforts to uncover the uh, hidden primordial gods of Ravnica and instead discovered why uh, the implicit maze 
avoided the sixth district, which was the ley line here, was uh, uh, binding a Nephilite, a previously undiscovered one, which he unleashed in the hopes of destroying a a uh, enterprise that had up until this point stymied his uh, designs for the sixth district, and it it squished him. Because elemental primordial forces have no masters. So, uh, so Bruna killed Spazabom then? In, in Bead unison. of sweat. <laughs> yeah, we just like all in unison go, yes. yes. I don't like the guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I just don't, you know what? I just have one more. What was with the deed? Good question. We still don't know where the deed wound up. And then, at, and then, because I had to, where did he go? Columbo. <laughs> Columbo just like what? came into some property recently. No, no. <laughs> Looking Columbo, for this. <laughs> Columbo walks in and says, oh, I know where that is. Why don't you go ask those two over there? And he gestures out to the smoldering remains of the bog where you can see a strange blue light glowing with two figures silhouetted in front of it. Do you want to go up there and look at that? Yes. I hop out of my hospital bed. <laughs> so you walk across the bog. Previously, this would have been horrific to get there, but now it's all been burned and raised and harmless, clean water is bubbling up instead of the disgusting foul ichor and all the weird monsters have dispersed. Um, and it's so magical here, green shoots are already starting to come out of the earth. Wow. Ooh. And you walk over and you see a light. You see a portal shimmering and reflects in the dim glow. And it has a strange, infinite pattern. And if you look into the portal, you can see a sunny blue sky and gleaming bronze spires reflected into it. And then it twitches and shifts and then it flashes to something different. Huge leaves the size of a lockipede or even larger. And then even bigger things behind it. And then it flashes again. And fire and brimstone rain from the sky into pools of lava. Keep to... going. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we're going to stay here until it's next person's turn. <laughs> yeah. And then they'll roll to move. Uh, the... Oh, no. Chaos. <laughs> There's two figures looking at it. And they're quite mm -hmm. depressed and going hmm and Rade says uh, well I guess I'm not going home anytime soon I'm not taking my chances if it's not stable well we can always oh wait sorry oh don't worry we can we can go through Dom area or we can go up to the 10th and go to Thunder Junction Ugh, the 10th it's so commercial I'd rather just stay here <gasps> really we'll have to send your family a letter oh they'd love that let's do that and they walk away Gaze, 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 but do you gaze. want to let them walk away or do you want to interrupt them and ask them about something that you that that has never been answered Did you steal from your own bank hey yeah what happened to the deed i feel like that is literally the only thing that needs wrapping up here <laughs> yeah oh Ogavin says well i never lied to you i just admitted some things the deed should be in the catacombs and i haven't been down there in years and then Rede, who you were realizing can move completely silently says but I went down there about three and a half months ago and shows you the deed. And Ogavin says, and no deed means no deal. And even because even if they did reach an agreement, you should know that the Orzov always ensure their most valuable assets. This is why I said you're an antagonist. You can't keep doing this to me. I don't care what you want. I'm happy, says Ogavin and leaves. And he's not a villain? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like... Did anything like Kamigawa show up in that goddamn omen path? <laughs> well, you know what? So as they leave, Ogavin says, kind of like, you know what? I'm the one who invited them here. If it wasn't for me, Tachi would have ripped their arms off. Technically, I think I saved everyone. And and Rade says, darling, that's pushing it. And sort of like, <laughs> they walk off together. Uh, then, yeah, the omen path is just flashing randomly now. And it looks like it's uh, going to go and... Avenir, you could destroy it. Or you could, or you could gel. You could just cast anything. You could dig it up. It's so unstable right now. 
How it fast? could be destroyed. Could and somebody through. did say it would be nicer if you destroyed it. But you could also go through it and see where you go. It's up to you. You can go into the omen path, you can destroy the omen path, or you can just leave it alone and see what happens. Enor, do you want to go through the omen path? Desperately. Okay. Roll me a d6. One. <laughs> you land with a thump, and a rat on a motorcycle looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> you got like, there! And says, what are you doing here, man? And then peels off and blows, uh, blows a donut, and the smoke washes over you. In the distance, a 24-hour ramen bar flashes. <laughs> do, Finally! Do, do. So Enor disappears through the omen path. Nog, what do you do? You know, done a lot for this plane. A shocking amount for one little goblin. Um, and every time I do it, uh, things seem to not go super well. I, You know, Avenue, you could do what you want to this thing, but... I don't think this plane appreciates our work very much. <laughs> yeah. And uh I maybe maybe it's time Valencia and I move on. It's been a pleasure. Good luck. Yeah. And uh Slock. I thought you were older. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm an old soul, dude. Uh Valencia goes up and uh gives each of you like a little lick. And we go, uh, well, are you going on another adventure? And she just kind of boofs and uh, we hop in. All right, roll me a d6. <laughs> we end up, <laughs> we jump into the we we're, 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 we're both dead. <laughs> <Come on! laughs> <laughs> one. I got one friend here. Hey, man. And hey, Valencia's here too. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> that, that's what he meant. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, well, you are over on Come and Go. That ramen bar's got plenty of seats available, and they go to say no dogs allowed, but it looks like you've had a bad night, so they just say whatever. Slock, your boss is so happy with you right now. I'm sure that's fine that she's going to be in charge of the Chamber of Commerce until she can cancel the elections. Which means she's going to be fine with me taking some vacation time, right? Absolutely. Great. Uh, Slock looks over at Avenir and goes, Peace and quiet, man. I just want some peace and quiet. <sighs> There's TV. And I, I want to go un through. Uh, Cam Gawa. Okay, roll me a D6. I rolled a six. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. We could you cool. drop into a beautiful meadow. Oh. In the background, you hear a goat bleating. Ah! <laughs> yeah! Oh, yeah. Uh, Slock kind of just kicks off his shoes and just goes like, oh. Great. Yeah. Avenir, you've seen your three party members jump through the omen path. Destroy. <laughs> I mean, they can get back. There's omen yeah. pass everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Do we just leave Avenir in the moment of indecision? Mm. That sounds wonderful. The next day, the sun breaks over the horizon. Ooh. It's the 17th of Selesny. <laughs> Got a big cross out back there. <laughs> Avenir, you're at work. Barrow comes in. Barrow comes in. Well, she she comes in. I don't my my thingy stopped working. Barrow comes in. <laughs> Open Barrow, the door, Avenir. <laughs> Barrow knocks on your door and she says, "Hello, Avenir." Hello, Minister. I heard you had an incredibly eventful night. What do you have to report? Um, well, we have learned why the 6th district was avoided by the implicit maze and it was because there was a nephilite buried under the ground, uh which was being suppressed by a previously undiscovered ley line. Gorov Bruna 
um, uh, 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 unleashed it in an effort to destroy uh, the warehouse and the bog, which had been standing in his way for his grand designs. And the Nephilim killed him, and we destroyed it. Revealing a previously undiscovered uh, omen path, which seems to be unstable. Excellent. Have you read today's paper? Uh, I it, it wasn't up for sale yet when I came into work. Oh, here, I'll hand it to you. So you, could you read that out loud, Avenir? Stadium Boondoggle comes to a crashing halt after Sausage Warehouse burns in mysterious blaze by Franca Dobrek, lead reporter. The 6th District Me Memorial Swampball Arena is officially dead in the water after a massive explosion at the Jitvara Overbog construction site that was so violent it partially destroyed the neighboring after Sausage Warehouse. There was an unplanned detonation involving some blasting materials, and as a result, the water table has shifted quite significantly, said Monic Schott Zip Spigot, the fourth assistant vice chair of Prism University's Department of of organic fluid dynamics and lead technical engineer on the project. We will have more information at a later time, probably once I dig my equipment out from the rubble. Despite the ferocity of the blaze, casualties were minimal. Although several dozen injuries were reported, there have been so far no confirmed casualties. However, several people are missing. Chamber of Commerce President Gorev Bruna, who was conducting an inspection of the site at the time of detonation, and Slock of the Golgari Swarm, Junior Investiga Investigator Noganog of the agency, one Mr. Enor of no guild affiliation. At time of printing, several search parties were being assembled and armed to search the overbog for the missing persons. Although the explosion puts the chamber's extensive plans for the ar area in what is certain to be permanent limbo, many people are celebrating the news. The bog is an untold source of unique Ravnican biodiversity, said Vosper Plax. Dr. Vosper Plax, head of the experimental mitology at Kapitza Dirac University. I think we can all say that regardless of what happened here, it was good for Ravnica. Thank you for watching By Law and Order 2. I would like to say a very quick thanks to the following people. Cameron, Ian, Wheeler, and Cameron, Ian, Wheeler for playing, Ben for playing, and for getting these episodes online, Paul and Beige for running tech, Mangled Pixel for the incredible intro, Featherweight for the amazing art, Graham and especially Jordan for the editing, and finally my endless gratitude to Graham Stark, Michelle, and Michelle Rapp for being such patient sounding boards for all of my stupid ideas, and Shiva Bot for his assistance and fact checking on Rude's name. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.